Hello everybody and welcome to The Hidden Breach and yet another episode of our Trash Talk. Today um, I and my guests will be looking at the new Neverborn models from the Ashes of Malifaux book. And I got today here with me, I killed Kenny and Roadhouse. So guys, I know both of you, but maybe our listeners or viewers don't. So would you probably introduce yourself, stressing how you ended up being here in this podcast talking about Malifaux models? Um... Okay, Ken, can you start us off? Yeah, so I killed Kenny, nickname, generally listen to Harry. Uh, oh, this is going to be a long one. So uh, I've been playing tabletops or tabletop war games competitively for, oh my God, almost 25 years at this point. I started out with Mage Knight, if anyone has ever heard of this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, don't bother. Uh, then made the switch fairly early to Warhammer fantasy uh then i switched to uh, war machine when gw effed up the eighth edition which was sad uh did a lot in war machine so played competitively all the way through right uh until then uh then i got more into the organizing side so did the whole shtick with official judge uh helped organize and judge larger cons and the wtc and stuff like that uh, I dabbled in Guild Ball on the side and made the proper switch to Guild Ball uh, after that. Then that weird thing in 2020 happened, uh, which for some reason caused Guild Ball to stop. No one know, knew why. Uh, it forced me a bit to dabble around in other systems. I checked out Bushido, which I didn't get to play any tournaments in. Uh, I even dipped my toes into 40k, played a tournament, won the tournament, decided it was too easy for me. <laughs> and uh, then I <laughs> and then I saw uh, an ad uh, an blog article for the Rotten Harvest Pandora box. Saw the sexy witch and thought, yes, I have to have this model now. Give me this model now. I bought it, and as luck would have it, a friend of mine I was playing Blood Bowl with actually uh, was a first edition Malifaux veteran, and he introduced me to the game, which mm -hmm. was around mid-GG2. And I've been playing Malifaux primarily competitively, obviously, ever since. And that's how I've met Hagen. I, I, I won't talk about it, but it involves bodily fluids. Oh, yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> no, okay, so you've come a long way here, and um, obviously had a good time coming here as well so you um about that 140k tournament you did did you uh use pay to win strategy or is it just um that you find 40k actually to be boring mentally so so as far as i how i got into uh 40k i was looking for a job for a year after uh, i was finished with my phd and just to t stay mentally sane, I decided, yes, we're building a 40k army now because that <laughs> occupies you for a long time. Yeah, uh, I built the cheapest one I could get, which was Death Guard, because you can just get starter boxes and convert everything from there, basically, which I did. <laughs> uh, and then I just, uh, on a whim, uh, went to a 1,000 uh, point tournament, did two test games before, uh, and three games in the tournament, which were my only three games in ninth edition of 40k. <laughs> and yeah, uh, for the aforementioned decision. Okay, uh, so sounds good. So, so sounds like you're capable of rolling uh, five plus all day. Uh, awesome. Um, as for you, Rodos, how did you get uh, to be here on the podcast today? So I started like basically everyone else in tabletop games with GW with 40k back uh, in third edition <laughs> forever ago. Um, that yeah, was played... with the dynamic sculpts, right? Uh, there was a lot of stuff back then <laughs> that doesn't yeah, exist. At least you could post the arms <laughs> free. <laughs> uh, um, so played both 40k and fantasy for the long time those were basically the only tabletop games i'd ever seen before um i think the story is similar to harry's in that when gw blew up fantasy and introduced age of sigmar i was like wow this sucks um and started looking outside of that i think a little bit before that i had been introduced to war machine and hordes though we ended up having a pretty good um 
community. Uh, Andrew Hartland, also known as Hacksaw, the guy that used to write the steamroller packets, actually lived in the same city as me. So we got to play test the um, tournament documents and stuff. And we traveled a bit and played at locals, you know, in neighboring states. Um, about the time my son was born, I took a hiatus from like all tabletop gaming for a long time and then when i came back i kind of dabbled in several things i tried infinity uh i tried dark age um didn't really come back to war machine because they had introduced the big bases and it really put me off of it and uh, i wasn't a fan of it I can't remember when the first time I saw Malifaux, except when I, I remember seeing first edition Malifaux and <laughs> thought those metal sculpts are absolutely hideous. I'm not going to play that game. <laughs> uh, when I finally picked it up was in I second edition and they had the plastics and I was like, wow, those plastics are gorgeous. I'm going to play that game. Um, and discovered the, the way the scoring is so different than the zone control that War Machine was or in 40k there just really wasn't an objective and it being asymmetrical and hidden information and the activation order instead of you know one person goes with their whole army and the other person goes with their whole army of the this model goes and then your one of your model goes and then one of my model goes again uh i thought that was really great so i stuck with it for a bit stopped came back right at the beginning of gg1 in m3 because my friend said hey let's play again everybody else in the community around me had just left off of it so i found the online scene and that's how we met hagen is the internet obviously i live in the southern united states and you are german um <laughs> It, it is it is how it happened i was pretty drunk though as we first played if i remember correctly that was great so yeah and then i said you're gonna bring me on the purple episode right and you said i guess so here i am now yeah that, that is that is how that went um yeah and you also the the first the first um, um citizen of the united states to appear on this podcast actually which is uh which is great so this is the first branch out <laughs> of um uh, my is, is this an appropriate moment for a yeehaw? Yeehaw. Uh, yeehaw. My mom said I was a special boy and you agreed with her assessment, so. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Um, awesome. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, and another thing that's probably of interest, I know that both of you actually managed to um, have a very good result at an in-life in tournament. I think, um, Harry, you won a tournament in Strasbourg, which had how many competitors? Uh, was like 14 if i recall correctly something in that ballpark oh, 14 okay for but it was a two-day tournament or not yeah it was set up as a two-day five-round tournament and we obviously played all five rounds though <laughs> i was leading starting <laughs> round two, so. okay so you played uh, basically it was um everyone versus everyone at the end okay fair <laughs> and i think you turner you went to adepticon and made second place something like that with purple uh, Right. I was second place undefeated because there were only three rounds. So there were multiple. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so like the opposite problem. Yeah, the opposite problem, I, uh... actually. <laughs> Very right. Good. Okay, so so they only could stop you by um, stopping the tournament at that point. That's awesome. No, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, cool. Um, do you guys think that this has to do with um, Neverborn being um, more apt at having good results in this gaining grounds as opposite to the gaining grounds before or what did change that this is um now a thing because if i remember correctly that wasn't always the the thing i know that carnage did some good stuff with uh, nekima one back in the day um but that was 2020 so big tournament wins were kind of a kind of a no-no for purple what has changed uh, if I'll go first, I suppose. Sure. I think GG3 had three stand here and control this space um, strats and one kill everything and try not to die strat. And I don't think Neverborn has a ton of flexibility into that. Uh, everything is kind of soft. There's some very fast elements that hit pretty hard, but all have glass jaws typically outside of the emissary and serena bowman 
Whereas GG4 is multiple, go fast, interact a bunch, be all over the table, and one area control strats. So there's a lot more flexibility in what you can bring into them versus the last GG. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd add to that that simply the the context changed not just as far as Nebel, how Neverborn interacts with uh, the GG as a whole, but also how the other factions around Neverborn interacted with the GG. Now the uh, bubble strategies can be very tough to crack depending on what you do or what you bring, and uh, those are just not favored in this GG anymore. And you can quite literally outpace your opponent as a Neverborn player these days. So you profit from both of these effects a bit going um, uh, with each other in this whole context. And the other thing is Neverborn just got right before GG4 a new errata, and I think that helped a lot. Yeah, the Doggos and um, the Angel Eyes rework. Yeah. Yeah. Um, particularly yeah. the doggos. Yeah, yeah particularly. The dogs, the yeah. Dogs, dogs, dogs are bonkers. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's um, it, it did change a lot. Like I was playing Outcast when the GG change happened, and my playstyle lost like uh, half of its stocks immediately. So I, yeah, actually, all the stuff that I play well um isn't as viable. Um, as before, which is obviously good, so you have to learn new new stuff. And I now have to respect Neverborn, which of course is kind of sad, but also very also very healthy for the game. So I think if we get Guild to a, a nominal level now, um, everything is looking really good. Um, awesome, but we are here to talk about the new models. Um, the first of which is Ithana. Um, and Ithana is um, from the Fey and Nephilim keyword, so we will see her in Titania and Nekima primarily. And Turner, why don't you give us your um, piece of thought on this one? I think her front of card ability gone to seed is sort of a band-aid for the minions of Fey to make it so that um, germinate is a bonus instead of a normal action. Outside, like Titania 1 takes almost no keyword at all. I guess contextually the Rex can be pretty decent, but you're definitely not hiring Autumn Knights. It was kind of okay to hire um, Waldgeists sometimes in previous GGs. They really don't do it this GG though because they're just not fast enough, and I don't think... Ithana does anything to help the minions in Titania 1. I think Aislinn becomes playable with Ithana. Maybe. I haven't actually tried I wanted to it yes. yet. <laughs> uh, I think be Aislinn being able to make the underbrush she needs to turn on the built-in into thorns on her decay m m maybe makes her playable and there's an additional synergy with entranced by the wood being able to move a corpse marker which could also enable aislin's ability to turn corpse markers into schemes because a lot of the time she's got a dead bonus but this gives her two ways to turn you know having no bonus into having a real bonus i don't think she's going to see much play in uh, Nephilim, that, t that keyword is so tight that I don't know that there's a lot of room for an eight soulstone model. I've seen people discuss using the coordinated attack trigger on her, her range attack, Desmonia's Thirst, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I don't know that she keeps up with Nekama 2 or Matures for that matter to you know get a lot of mileage out of that, but it's probably worth experimenting with. I mean, it is yeah. the, it is the obvious thought I think when you look at the back of the card and think what what is this um, going to do in Nephilim if at all? Um, cool. So, Harry, do you like yes. agree with Turner? Or you I, mean, think? I, I take I take umbrage with the fact that the Nephilim keyword is on this card because it's quite obviously been uh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I mean, you can't make it any more obvious that they uh, uh, that they just realized, hey, we have to put in a, a Nephilim model. Hey, Ifana only has one keyword so far. Let's give her that um, because the I mean, uh, the five seven uh, on defense and willpower is pretty Titania. So is movement five. Uh, Gone to Seed is 100% a Fey ability, and uh, all the other abilities she has, like Black Blood and Regeneration, might as well be Life Leech, and she'd be a mini Titania at this point. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah. So you, you might you could argue that Heartspike gives her some minor uh, interactions with the Nephilim keyword, but uh, yeah, as, as if you need more corpse uh, markers, and you, you you'd make plenty. Like that, that's what you do. You make corpse markers either the old-fashioned way or uh, differently. So uh, I'm yeah, like mm. I said, I take umbrage with the whole uh, Nephilim keyword thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you, you could. I mean, you could construct a scenario for Nekima and the matures with picking her up with uh, a mature and landing her in a good position to be uh, to deliver whole Desmonia's first ability. But honestly, this this model just screams Titania all over. Like every single one of her abilities is either something that you make better use of if you use her in a Titania uh, crew, namely Thirsty Roots with uh, dropping an underbrush marker, because mm -hmm. you oh you can never have too much underbrush markers in Titania. Indeed. And in Trance the Woods, as you mentioned, gives her amazing synergy uh, with Aislin, so making her suddenly a viable model in giant air quotes mind you but still uh, so all in all i don't know i mean in titania 2 i think the uh gone to seed action actually becomes far more interesting because there at least i generally take three models plus that do have germinate so the two autumn nights plus a pig and the pig doesn't mind having a bonus action if it doesn't want wants to or can properly ambush Indeed. and this is always just free uh, underbrush markers are useful particularly with the pig if you add a dinosaur to the mix you can have more ability or more opportunities to reduce damage which makes the whole crew a bit sturdier so all in all this is a titania model and that just happens to not play out of keyword tags for Nekima. This is how I would put this model. Okay, <laughs> this is that harshly. I mean, they design wise, they put horns on her and gave her a blue skin. Uh, so she's, you know, I think she's actually an ancient Nephilim story wise. So they, they, they try to sell it that way to you, but you're not buying into it. Okay. I mean, Photoshop exists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, she she was probably just a tree before, and then they they photoshopped it back. She may in. have horns, but she's also covered in plants. So. That is also that is also <laughs> true. Um, I mean, it's a bit it's still a bit hazy. Um, how the how the actual lore is. Um, but interesting. So, do you guys think that she's in always higher in Titania or only in Titania two? Or in both, or how how would you how would you do that? It's a tough one. Mm. Yeah, it's a tough one, honestly. I mean, as far as Titania two goes, I'd honestly consider her strongly. Uh, as mentioned, you have this, uh, you have actually a lot of positive interactions with the Autumn Knights, with the pig. Add to that the dinosaur, and you suddenly have a admittedly bubbly, but still very. Uh, well interacting very combo-y crew on your hands that actually profit where every model profits from every ability of every other model in some way shape or form so there she has a good spot there i particularly actually want to look at her in titania one because um i have a feeling that people are too focused on how titania one used to be played as with the all-star crew uh, especially with the emissary who now gg4 context isn't that great anymore and uh going over that titania one then having herself having germinate as a bonus action freeing her up to shoot three times mm -hmm. and uh, moving uh, underbrush around or placing more underbrushes for Titania 1 to do her thing. Uh, Aislinn, as mentioned, as a possible second hire in that crew and then flesh it out in some way, shape or form. We will look at in a minute, possibly. Absolutely. I think there's something there. It would require some testing, though I think it, there might be something that uh, makes Titania 1 in keyword at least interesting. Most, yeah, more so than I, before. I think Titania one really fell out of favor um, with the way the game advanced. I used to rank her pretty highly uh, before card draw was such a big thing because the positive flips is like pseudo card draw, you know, prior to everyone having tons of card draw. Um, and I think Athana makes her stronger into the things that she was good at previously, but fell out of favor for. So I think, like Harry said, it requires some testing, but there's probably legs.
Mm, awesome. And I mean, uh, we don't have to talk about Nicky Ma. I hope we, we agree on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no, I, 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 I thought as much because, um, I mean, you can probably build a crew around um, an, an injured build where you have Titania and Aislin handing out injured. And this Monia's Thirst is actually giving you good value there as well. Um, as far as I, uh, as far as my experiences, um, also Thirsty Roots is, is one of the better shockwaves in the game. Actually, to be completely yeah. honest, um, because it's always movement thirteen, if not higher, because underbrush and damage two poison one, and sometimes it's off a fifty millimeter base. Um, that is that is a great shockwave for a six and standing around and twiddling your thumbs um, in the back lines. Um, my, my okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys if you thought the same as I did because this is a bit like criticism. Um, when I saw Gone to Seed, I was instantly nodding because um, I know that I myself actually um, proposed that change to the keyword at some point in the forum in 2020 or 2021. I'm not sure which year. Like make germinate a bonus action to help the Titania keyword out as a whole and make it more playable in keywords. So I was like, yeah, awesome. Awesome. That is that was like along my lines of thought. And don't you guys think that Ithana is basically what the Aislin rework should have been at that point? Because I was a bit like, yeah, why wouldn't you rework Aislin to be like that? No, not really. Okay. They 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 have at at least on at first glance they do have slightly different roles uh, because Aislin has the secondary thing with scheme markers and uh, using corpses or scraps to make schemes out of them whereas Ifana is basically a gun turret more or less yeah Aislin has a reliance on the underbrush that Ifana doesn't either okay uh, sounds fair. I, I was just just thinking about that because, as far as I was concerned, until um now, and you you two both that maybe that is not to now is um, Aislinn's job was collecting dust. Um, oh, definitely. So <laughs> that that was basically her role in the keyword. Like you, n I've never never ever seen someone hire her apart from the first two games when I taught someone playing uh, Malifo <laughs> in 2020 and he was like playing it playing her two yeah. times and then going no that's that's bad I'm gonna take something uh, something versatile and that was the third game and it was an absolute beginner <laughs> and that uh, was... yeah I tried Aislinn a bunch uh when I first came back to the game and it was always she was too slow and never had enough impact because my opponent was playing around the built-in into thorns and she didn't have a way to both get into range and put the underbrush down where I needed it to be. Mm. And Athana yeah. fixes that. So I think that's why it gives Aislinn legs. Okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> looking looking forward to trying that out, to be honest, um, because that seems like a more interesting Titania 1 build. Cool. Now, did we miss anything on Ithana? Or do you guys think we can jump over to our friend, the smiling forest uh, tree thingy? <laughs> the angry orchard. <laughs> the angry we, orchard. We, the, the carny wood. We can go on with the carny wood. The carny wood. Okay. So um, I think it's actually the kind of orus weird wood, and it's a seven soul stone. Um, hey, nobody did time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of, of course, of course. <laughs> um... And yeah, it's it's a giant tree that looks kind of either hungry, angry, or whatever. And um, what do you guys think of this one? That's good value for seven soul stones. Is it is it valuable in both its keyword, or is it also only a just a titania model? I, I mean, first of all, we have to admit again that if you squint really hard at the artwork, you still see the duct tape where the ne uh, nephilim keyword is. But it has, it has it has black blood. I mean, it has black blood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has black blood, yeah, has and black that's blood. about it that makes him a Nephilim. Yeah. Uh, although, admittedly, he does have uh, uh, more corpse interactions. I don't want to exactly call it payoffs. Uh, then uh, he's more of an enabler. He he makes more corpses. Yeah, he makes he makes corpses. Thank you. Enabler is the perfect okay. word here. But, Thank you very much. But we we didn't need more of those. I I heard you say. Yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the thing. We don't. Okay, cool. So I mean, it's just 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 looking at uh, them, pure stats wise, a seven cost model with seven hit points, armor, uh, 
Black six, blood and planted six, roots. Five willpower. <laughs> yeah. Planted roots, so self healing, and a two inch melee attack that has the potential to be a min three. It's actually pretty decent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think no it's stats. quite good for seven. Yeah. Um, I see it. So I've tried the Noxious several times in corner games with Nekama 2 as a dirtily grow engine, and it's been okay in that it it acts as like a filtering because you're pinging it and passing off the damage to draw more cards. But this thing at 7 is going to... F it won't get the filtering, but it gives you the extra corpses you need to do the dirt Dirtly Grow engine. And then I think after it's filled that role, it'll have a more outsized impact on the table just because how fast it potentially can be um, with the Cradle of Life trigger on its germinate being able to teleport around. It's not really fighting anybody for the the low masks that it would need for that in the keyword. Um, and then it is just another vector of min three at stat six, which is real good. Hmm. Yeah, and the, especially since the Cradle of Life is on a Germinate, uh, as we were alluding to with Ifana, this is another one of those models that uh, is basically a miniature Archie when Ifana is around. <laughs> okay, so it sounds, it sounds appealing to me. Um... Yeah, stat line looking good. What role would it take? So I, I've I've um, heard that it's like an enabler in Nekima more or less because you can drop a corpse marker when you punch someone with the melee in base contact. Um, that seems um, like awfully risky because it's a min three attack. So if you like draw the unlucky moderate, you give someone four damage. Isn't yeah, that... but you also recycle the corpse markers. I think that's right. one of the major ones. And you can punch a young Nephilim. So the non young Nephilim, even if it takes severe, won't die, regens at the start of its activation, it heals more from eating the corpse you just dropped off of it. So you can really feed, it'll heal basically all the damage you do to it, even on a severe, mm -hmm. before it's at any risk of being hit. I think it'll, this thing can see play as a scheme runner um, for Titania. Agreed. It's going to it's gonna help with the unpack with the snagging vines, which is really great to just move one of your own things. Like three inches stacks up when, you've, when you're putting in a lot of them. And then it'll hop around later on and just be a difficult to remove scheme runner, which I think that keyword is lacking. And I also think you'll see it uh, as a type of scheme runner in Zoraida <laughs> okay. using regrowth to do double stitch summons with widow weaver okay yeah you can you can do stupid you can do stupid mm. stuff in that one yeah the, the with yeah. Zoraida, let's, let's be fair we have stories <laughs> we don't need that <laughs> yeah i mean you get you get you get um you get stitched and you still have the widow weaver after so um widow weaver is yeah. uh, basically also a kind of serious um yeah. scheme runner in itself so yeah and I think I, I mean, think if I, if I remember, Eric Turner's not the biggest fan of Salurids right now. No, they just kind of get bopped. This this That's in true. this GG, everybody is hiring stuff that is super fast and can deal with six wound scheme runners pretty easily. But I so love contextually to the GG, I mean, they're I think they are good when people aren't default in into hiring things that just fly across the table and kill them in one hit. <laughs> well, fair. Uh -huh. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Um, and it's another model like Neverborn couldn't really play uh, in your face denial super well. The first point. Uh, this is just another very sturdy seven cost model that will enable Wiss to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. indeed. Um, also, I mean, it's it's a two inch engage. Um, so far, at least the fake keyword hasn't like a ton of those, if I remember correctly, because for some reason, <laughs> the um, honorable mention Killjoy only has a one inch engage. Yeah. Massive cleaver. Yeah, yeah, mass, it's a massive, <laughs> massive pen knife, yeah. indeed. Uh, it's very sad. Um, so this could also be like a cool tar pit at some point because it's two inch engagement armor one black blood planted roots if you position it correctly can shut down a lot of stuff for its i mean for its cost at least 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm repeating the, the statement regarding the pig because by recycling your uh, markers, your underbrush markers, when you sack them with your uh, with the pig with the aromatherium ball, um, it gives you more value. So I, I can definitely see this one in Titania, strongly depending on the context, obviously, and it also gives you a in keyword scheme runner. So yeah, okay. I'm, for Titania, I'm liking it. In Ikima, I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see myself removing or using my flex slot for it, to be frank. Okay. I have I have other out of keyword I dumb ideas we'll be getting to later. Yeah, okay, fair, fair, sounds good. So this is also an 80% Titania thing. I mean, to be to be honest, if I'm looking at the current meta and how I experience it when I face Neverborn and when I look at the results, I think it's probably very agreeable to say that the fake keyword needed the um, boost much more than the nephilim keyword needed the boost because nephilim especially like um nekima 2 is doing golden work right now or sterling work i should say for the neverborn and their win rates yes he's absolutely kicking butt all day cool yeah nephilim is one of the keywords that when you see it it's almost entirely if not 100 percent in keyword and that fey if you see it it's the Titania show, and mm. except for Titania too, but I don't think she's very good. So, mm. yeah, I, I definitely love me some uh, Demon Domi Mommy, but uh, nevertheless, it <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, I'm, uh, just just in general for both of these models, it's I, I think it's a bit sad that they are. I mean, I like that they push the fake keyword a bit, although I don't think it's enough to really push them over the top or into serious consideration given the competition in faction uh what what makes me a bit sad about them is just that i'm, I'm looking at all the models coming out in this book uh, that i would want to test with nikima and those two don't even make my top three okay now that is that is that is I'm really curious. <laughs> I want to see what you've got cooking later on. We'll come to it. So um, for these two models, so I think it's like the Fey uh, Fey lovers will get this box instantly. And if you say you're primarily Nephilim, you'd guys say maybe you can skip this competitively. Um. Yeah, because I don't think I would ever hire Ithana in either version of Nekama and for two I would try the Weirwood but only in very specific setups definitely mm -hmm. only in corner because you can't dirtle in any other deployment and only if I want to do silly things okay so. yeah I'd second that I mean uh, Titania needs a much more serious rework than just two mildly strong models mm, at this point we would we would like to see that um but I think yeah I think that's fair I mean the we get a bonus action on every model that is useful uh, if only as an aura is a big step in the right direction I think so. I think they oh, yeah. Rem remove the aura and make it table wide. I mean, it's not unprecedented. I, I, I think I, part of the problem with the way that the fake keyword functions is if your opponent can't deal with underbrush, what it was doing already was really oppressive. And this is just, oh, you can't deal with all the severe terrain. Well, now you, there's even more of it that you can't deal with, yeah, but, but it doesn't do anything to address the poor matchups. Yeah. yeah. No, that or just a simple, well, I fly, or I'm incorporeal, or oh, whatever. Right, oh, it's oh. like the underbrush doesn't matter for me, so congratulations, yeah. you got more of it. It doesn't matter still. Yeah, I had, a, I had a game lately where I played Pandora 2 for once, and I walked into the underbrush marker, so Titania 1 would have uh, negative flips against me all day, and I was like, great, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a great place to be, thank you. Oh. <laughs> and that's, that's, good times, good times. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So, do you guys think that um, you see either of those models out of keyword? Because my gut feeling says probably not. I heard Zoraida for Carnivorous Weirdwood. I think there's potential for the Weirdwood if you're doing uh, I'm going to deny in your face and I want to also have this pretty potentially mobile um difficult to remove for cost model maybe for other things but i think it's mostly just going to be for zareta cheese 
Maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to give him a try in Zoraida, the the Wukani Wood, though. I, I'd second that. It's it's uh, a model in the list of models uh, a Neverborn player could take if they would want to deny in your face, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, it's not as if Zoraida doesn't have options as well. So Right. Mop. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think we move on. Next up in line, we got the, um, the Crook skin, which are a... Yeah, a weird-looking Mimic-like model. And they are from Mimic and Savage keywords, so we will see them in Lucius and in Euripides. And they are six soul stone. Minion 2 living models. Now, I'm I'm curious what you guys say. Um, Turner, do you, would you hire that in Lucius? That thing? The yes. Cook skin? Yes, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Slam dunk, windmill. It's going in. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. They, 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 have, they have so many... So first of all, Lucius 2 just uh, really was hurting for a second mobility piece in Keyword. Like, Lucius 2 was the only mobility piece you had, and uh, otherwise you had to go into stupid stuff like, I picked the rider to have another mobility piece. Which that is, doesn't feel doesn't all feel too good. good. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And, uh, rider, <laughs> mature Nephilim. <laughs> oh, yeah, mature. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, now we got so, Crook skins. Don't, 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 thing... be don't be that guy. Everybody goes with double mature Nephilim. Even my Pandora goes with double mature. That's... Yeah, but yeah, you're right. So it, 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 it's, it's nice to have, have a proper mobility piece in keyword, uh, first of all, uh, for Lucius 2. And uh, Lucius 1 actually can make some more stupid stuff with them. Okay. Uh, given how these guys with Craven imitations, uh, their, their teleport ability or their, their, their mini secret passage, if you will, um, with the mask trigger. Uh, you can set up pretty stupid hidden sniper shots if you need to. And I think that's a very nice bonus for Lucius 1. So in that whole context, plus you have more cards with Lucius 1. Um, I think there's there's potential to do shenanigans. So I, I'm, I'm hearing that you will solo Lucius 1 at the tournament at the weekend? Like... Crooks. I will not. Oh, sad. Okay, sorry. I was thinking double crookskin proxy go. Yeah, because I don't have crookskins yet. Yeah, I fair. bought them and I have to. Come I mean, I'm, I'm one of those weird people who only plays miniatures if the, he has them play uh, painted, which yeah. is one of the restrictions I put on myself for Malifaux specifically to don't overbuy. And what it led to is that I developed a workflow which lets me finish a dozen miniatures in three days. Yeah, that is that is what I think. You have the highest output of all <laughs> in our community. That is basically what you did to yourself. Um, okay, very, very good. Um, cool. So, Turner, you said also absolutely Windmill Slam then into Lucius. Um, is that only because of the sneak away trigger on the Craven Imitations action? Or is there anything else that makes them appealing to you? Uh, it's six soul stones that is gonna, outside of weird stuff like Seamus one, not gonna get one shot, um, which I think is great. The hard to wound and seven wounds on a six soul stone, even with the Mopey five four, it, and it's also got stealth and it's got always like you've got you can't even attack this thing if the red joker or thirteen is sitting on top because you're definitely gonna be at negatives. Um, it's just super solid for six plus the startle and their their attack targets movement for whatever reason so attacking movement gets around i don't think there's a single resistance trigger on movement there i think there is on. one there's one on the new models i think the bunging guy from 10 thunders has the first resistance trigger on movement which is very annoying to me oh. as well yeah i know it's they so, they, they did it <laughs> but yeah otherwise not only does... that video. <laughs> Watch that <laughs> video, everyone. Watch that video. We we don't talk about the trigger because we miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so startle enables its own attack, makes it effective stat seven. If you're in Lucius two, which is what we're talking about, the planning head marker can make this thing min three on one of its attacks. If that's for a six soul stones? Yes, yeah. this is great. <laughs> yeah, okay. Plus the fact that you have general uh, staggered interactions or positive interactions with staggered uh, all around Lucius. Yeah. So Lucius himself, else. investigators doing more damage. 
There, there's a lot here. Okay, so you hire investigators as well. Now I'm. Uh, no, 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 no. Now, I'm, in, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tried it once, like dropping schemes and pushing everything around in the first the start phase is really cute, and then it just dies. That is a seven soulstone model that does get one shot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you underestimate the power of dirtling with Lucius stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, f okay, fair. I mean, I, we got we got one player uh, coming to the tournament at the weekend who basically exclusively plays Lucius most most days, and uh, he, he, I think he's a big fan of um, investigators. Mm, but on, even he can only make them half work. <laughs> that is that is for sure okay so that's a yes for lucius um we got something that doesn't keel over in a flash and that gets up the board in some way at some point mm, i get that how about with uh yuri is there use for crook skins in yuri also yes also yes so i give strong maybe okay depending on the context Okay, so I want to hear the yes opinion first. In that case, um, why why is this a yes for you, Turner? Uh, there's going to be ice pillars to use to go exactly where you want. There's a lot of interesting like things that get opened up because you're not limited to just the blocking terrain that started on the table. There is going to be extra blocking terrain on the table. They get faster. Um, if you've got cult guys in the list, this enables you to hire a bunch of really cheap guys that don't get one tapped. Like you could take two, both the crookskins and all three Boltungen. And now that Boltungen have hard to kill, everything in the list takes two actions to kill unless they've got something that either ignores hard to kill or can ping after they do the damage um then the stagger stuff is just always good and if it's euripides one then making them two less to their resist on the uh simple duel is good when you're blasting out a bunch of instances of two damage yeah i mean it's movement 14 anyway it's pretty yeah that, that, that was what i was seeing as well but the 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 staggered interactions with yuri one look uh pretty nice i think there, there definitely is something there with uh like trying to stack multiple staggers from multiple sources because we have also lissas in keyword and uh, the, the, there's some potential there to then abuse Lucius One's Ice Pillar making and force the opponent to do uh, effectively movement 16 TNs uh, to avoid the damage. So there, there, there's definitely something there. Though in the, the main role, the, the mobility piece role, let's be real, we have a damned in, Lucia, uh, in Euripides. Mm. They, they, he doesn't really need that, uh, uh, not as a primary mobility piece. I can see him as a secondary mobility piece, particularly in Eur Euripides 2, which I've been maining for a while now. And uh, there, there is some context where you might need a second mobility piece, depending on the scheme pool. Though, first pick uh, always will be the damned in that, for, for that particular role. Mm. Yeah, the damned is I, slightly underpriced model. Yeah. Yep. My experience with the damned that it always I always overextend it and it just dies. And this thing, the 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 difference between it is two health, one willpower, but it gains stealth and it's three soul stones cheaper. That's pretty, you know, you're not losing much. Gaining stealth is potentially a lot. Um and I, the thing that's going to be with Craven Imitations and the old ways, when you're cheating off the top of your, or not cheating, but flipping off the top of your discard and taking a point, Craven Imitations is always going to heal. That built-in self-heal every single turn is also just dope. Sure. No, I'm, 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 uh, I think they're cool and everything. Just given the context of what Euripides has to offer, my first choice would always be the Damned, just it's because it is the objectively better model for that role and most importantly since it's a mobility piece the more reliable model in that role because you don't you're not relying on having a mask at hand either top of this card pile or in your hand mm. i mean if we look at the current gg i think it's fair to say that you probably want the damned and something else so if they fit that role then there's a probably higher for that because when you play repetitions in a pool where they're is a lot of um interacting in the enemy backline and stuff like that then the damned will die very fast because your opponent i mean if the opponent wants the damned 
dead, then the damned is dead. There's probably not a lot discussion about that because if I see Euripides, I will I will have something that can kill the damned, and it has to die. Otherwise, it's going to rampage through your back line and score three points by itself. There's basically no discussion. Oh, yeah. So if you have a crook skin that can you know sneak by the um, distraction that the damned is and get something done for you, get a point or maybe two points for six or stone. Um, the question is, do you have the space? Do you have the um, flexibility in your Euripides lists um, that you can fit in a six whole stone model? I don't know. Um, I mean, my, my Euripides 2 list uh, always comes with a built-in flex slot of like uh, nine-ish, uh, suspiciously nine-ish mm -hmm. uh, soul stones. Uh, so there's definitely room to uh, use a candy slot for a crook skin for a first test. Though, depending on how it goes, and again, context, I might consider shuffling some other stuff around to make room. Okay. I, I don't really have a set Euripides list. He's one of my least played um, masters. So coming in with a fresh perspective, I think this thing is great, especially for Euripides 1. It's a much more yeah. reliable way to set up a pillar of the table for Euripides to bonus teleport into than a um cyclops is yeah indeed i mean oh, yeah, if, we, if we can cycle the cyclops out i think everyone is going to be happy we don't need the mask on the thing and gee we don't need to have a defense for our model sitting around pretty getting face punched by everything that can like jump into your back line i don't know oh, yes. it's one of the models that i like like visually but it i think it needs some some justification um, yeah, them, them, them cheeks, right? Yeah, they had them. They are them us, yeah, them <laughs> cheeks. Um, and All no, caked up. <laughs> but um, honestly, honestly, I wish that model would get more love because it shows how desperate some uh, Euripides players are that they need to hire that thing. You know, that's horrible. It's super inefficient. I mean, I tried uh, a very stupid Euripides list once uh, with the aforementioned mature Nephilim uh, and the Kurgan, and it was just a, a dumb strategy of throwing literally everything into my OP's deployment zone and just looking what happens. So, sounds, I won so, game. Sounds good. Mm, sounds like a strategy I would have come up with. Uh, did it work? It didn't work. Okay. It worked a couple ball. of times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. It, it didn't win me any events, but it did work. Yeah, I mean that's important. I mean, winning events—you you won one this year. That's enough, man. You got leave space for the other guys in the community, right? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> okay, that's what I like to hear. Um, awesome. So, crookskins. Um, I don't know. Seems they are. It seems it's not the super hype model, but it seems a very, very useful model, uh, to say the least. If you guys ready, we can jump into the um, into the weirder stuff. Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm hearing. I'm hearing opinion um, in the wind or feeling it. However, next up we got Delirium. It's a nine soulstone cost enforcer from Nightmare and Wokey World. So we see that in Dreamer and Pandora mainly, and. Um, the artwork looks to me like it's a juiced up um, insidious madness, basically. Something that went wrong with one. Guys, what do you think? Uh, would you hire I mean, that in either? Or is it like auto hire or complete crap? I mean, it's not just the artwork. It's the whole stat line and front of the card that says, that basically screams, I'm a special, special insidious madness so yeah. uh yeah but definitely would hire it i mean pandora uh has and always will be my first love in this game so i'm, I'm happy about everything that uh, gives her new or better options and uh starting out with her it, it's basically the one model she was missing in keyword and that's a proper beta because what the, what, what we have in pandora so far is technically teddy but that one comes with a seven point tax and it, the, 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 what's good. another thing called carver or something can't remember oh, i have it this. yeah min two beater <laughs> yeah <good>. exactly <laughs> what uh, yeah, it has inbuilt crit strike right yeah, yeah, yeah exactly um 
So yeah, del delirium is uh, to to a large extent. I mean, I don't want to overstate things, obviously, but uh, to a large extent, delirium is basically everything Pandora would want in mm -hmm. a big model that beats. So it has a min three melee attack that just randomly can discard cards for mm -hmm. your opponent because why not? Uh, it has another condition that it can dish out as a bonus action has positive interactions with dishing out that condition because it's adversary has a stupid trigger on that bonus action that just supports uh your whole crew or uh, just supports itself and has a ranged attack that is just the pinnacle of flexibility because you can use it to either glimpse of the void something deal damage or remove conditions on your own model which is also something you occasionally might want to. Indeed. So I'm, I'm loving this. I mean, fr front of the card, yes, incorporeal, misery, and opportunist and adversary, and this terrifying 12, yep. obvious 12, uh, with 5 and 6 in defense and willpower. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving this. I think it's the single strongest model by sheer stats out of the whole book for Neverborn. Okay. I'm less high on it than that. I my big problem with both Woe and Nightmare is that Terrifying loses a ton of value whenever you declare either of those masters because your opponent is likely to bring in the things that are good at facing it, either high willpower or ruthless. Um I think one of the strengths that a lot of people are overlooking for this thing and woe particularly because everyone's so high on pandora 2 is pandora's one's ability to discard a card and give that suit to the to one of the woes yep. so you can build in glimpse the void on this thing's ranged attack or you can build in touch of madness on mm. its melee which is disgusting yep. and if if you're glimpsing them while they're under the distraction aura from the poltergeist, you're burying them all. <laughs> or just, or just got, uh, or just got their nose in their bonus action, which, uh, as it happens to be, also has the same range as their shot. So, yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> this this thing, and I also, it's. I think this is good for the faction overall as an offensive condition removal piece. Um, yep. Everybody's talking about how great Reva 2 is right now. And this guy is like, oh, I'm immune to your pyre markers. And also, I'm going to end the burning condition on your lamp pad and shoot it with two, four, five damage tracks. Sorry. <laughs> yep. It just kills lamp pads, just kills them. And it's, it, I mean, anything that's like uses a condition like that built up on themselves that it can just turn off because the prey on nothingness is inbuilt uh this thing is super flexible i also like it in dreamer too that it's a beater that brings an additional lucid dream yeah absolutely i mean yeah. in dreamer 2 it will instantly re replace i'm playing the dreamer 2 with three madnesses and five soul stones which is far too much for dreamer 2 barely needs to so uh this will instantly replace a, a madness in my dreamer cruise mm. i think you should add a wicked a wicked door before that so you don't have i as already have oh you already have or you have all <laughs> wicked dolls okay fair mm. well one but yeah two, so two take... wicked dolls is a bit too much nah i think in I dreamer think you, it is. if you're complaining about having too much soul stones then just just take another body and walk it up the table yeah but but i see that i mean it basically does the same job as a um insidious madness does only better um it doesn't have scatter but makes up for that with a better damage track and stuff so yeah but the good. difference is that with an insidious madness you kind of as an opponent don't mind engaging it because it still is technically only a min two beater but this thing hurts yeah <laughs> This thing can dish out some pain, so it, 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 I think it doesn't mind that it doesn't have the scatter. Mm, I think it's also good for the spread of attacks um, that you have because it has a defense anti willpower attack again, so um, this makes it less um, predictable how you attack it home. Yeah, um, I don't know. Seems seems like a very awesome piece of work. Would you guys hire that um, out of keyword like? Apart from against Reaver 2, who's going to be sad when you remove Burning from her stuff, and have Terrifying 12, which I think she also doesn't is, isn't the greatest fan of. Yeah, I think this Maybe. thing is probably good into 
oh, who uh, Tiri, because there's going to be shielded on everything. So it basically, it's not just plus one damage. It's also the plus one damage you're getting from them not reducing it with shielded. Um, there's Karis. There's there's probably several that I can, if I were to look through stuff, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll take it there. Oh yeah, I'll take it there. Yeah, there, it's good there. It's good there. <laughs> there's I mean, there's, 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 always, <laughs> there's always an argument to be made for a, a model that removes conditions and in, is in this price segment. I mean, the, the go-to is still Serena, which costs eight out of keyword. This would cost, cost 10, but would do significantly more than just remove conditions from your own models if you need to. So there's always an argument for a movement six incorporeal model that can remove conditions in a matchup where you really need that. Mm, indeed. Also, I think incorporeal especially is much more useful this GG than Serena will ever be apart from removing conditions because you can just walk through yep. that building and drop the scheme or plant the bomb on the other side and Serena has to like take three walk actions. And that is, um, that is different value. Also, my experience when playing against Serena is that I don't mind my opponent taking her because I feel like most days she doesn't she doesn't pull eight soul stones anymore. I mean, before the nerf she pulled like fifteen, um, but after the nerf, I think she... yeah, with, without without claim jump in this uh, in the scheme pools, uh, Serena loses a lot of ground. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not as center focused uh, GG as it was before, so maybe that's also that shift. Mm, interesting that delirium would go instead of that i mean 10 soul stones out of keyword is quite a lot of money i mean that's you taking no tree but i think harry you said you won't take the tree as much the emissary this gg yeah i mean the the the, the thing with the emissary is it's a yes movement six but it's basically a gun platform that wants to stand still and shoot all around and in a GG where everybody is running around the table in circles, there's not much to shoot around. So you, you're losing a lot of efficiency for a 10-piece model. Though this thing can do everything you need it to. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's also got, with Autophobia giving something adversary, you can move their model. And that's not generally a, a duel your opponent wants to cheat. So like it's yeah. just going to be adversary of for this this one guy. Oh, you've already taken a walk action. You're only going to get one pause from this. I'm not cheating this. You hit it with him, then you push him two inches, which is you know two inch pushes are game changing. Or just finishing up a hard to kill model in uh, with a bonus action. Always also always feels. Oh yeah, good. that's that's good too. <laughs> okay, one more way to get around hard to kill. I think hard to kill value has has uh, gone down um, immensely Massive. since uh, burns because uh, there's basically every third card has something that says ignore hard to kill. Um, so yeah, awesome. You guys think that's a good Zerada pick? I mean, you can you can give it fast. Um, as obey is actually an attack action it will only take one damage from um the burnout trigger and can go 19 inches somewhere and punch face honestly yeah. for 10 points i'm not sure because the competition is just so hard like really? in, in this okay. point segment we're looking at mature nephilims we're looking at even the rider who in this particular context has a similar role it's a fast model that can punch real hard yeah, but I mean, we are. This is incorporeal. This is the incorporeal option that I don't see you having before. Well, then, then show me the table, and I'll answer your question. Okay, fair, fair. But it's it's like not impossible to think about it. Let's put no, it. No, no, no. Okay. And okay. contextually, that terrifying twelve gets a lot better in certain scenarios, especially when your opponent is not thinking about terrifying being in the okay. matchup. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if you play Zerada, then your opponent will probably think about willpower at some point. I think most people just shrug and say she's going to obey. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> just bow down and let it happen. It, I, it'll be over soon. I, 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 my hiring that. philosophy into Zerada is I'm going to hire models that are bad at like being obeyed. Like they get obeyed, and I just shrug and say, "Okay, you got it." <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think I think people overestimate. Um, overestimate how many cards and how the card quality of the radar is going to be um because the... yeah but the thing is if you don't overestimate it it really f's you 
Because, because then there's this one turn where the card quality really is where the Zoroida player needs it to be. And then this and then you can lose the game on the spot. Um okay, fair. Maybe maybe I'm just maybe I'm just underestimating Zoraida after all this time. I know I shouldn't, but Recency bias is what it is. No, no, no. That was not that, that, that was that was not the writer's fault. I mean, I, I okay. I'm not going to spoil that too much because the, the game is not uh, is not on the channel yet. But yeah, some people can flip cards, man, and some can't. Mm -hmm. screw, yeah, that's true. Screw, 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 screw your, screw your hand, screw your oh, hand. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm smelling some salt over the Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it's perfectly fine. I mean, like four moderates in a row, negatives is perfectly okay. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, next up, we got the delirious thrall A five soulstone calls minion. Ooh, three of those we are getting. A uh, living model, interestingly, for um, nightman woe. So same cruise as before. Mm. This is interesting because both of those keywords actually have models in that cost range. Um, what do you guys think? Is this expanding your possibilities? Is this a good model? What is it for? Because I'm a bit hazy. I'm I'm honest with you from what I. Every every model with those keywords that is living just creeps me out. I don't know why. Yeah, fair. <laughs> it's a bit like. <laughs> but but apart uh, apart from the the semi relevant uh, fluff and lore behind it, they're a good summon depending on the situation. And yeah. that's about the end of it. <laughs> Okay. It's a summon that taxes the opponent's hand with the built-in House of Mirrors trigger on their defense. And just generally opens up shenanigans with misdirection against the crew, or with a crew, Pandora, that actually efficiently attacks the opponent's hand. So there's there's potential there to do stupid things. Oh, now I'm, I'm, I'm reading misdirection for the second time, and now I get it. Okay. Okay, fair. Yeah. Um, so if they're winning the duel against it on defense and they have another model, you can transfer the attack onto their model. So they either have to cheat under it to not do it and just miss completely or discard a card, which makes yeah. more sense. But if they don't have a card to discard, then... They yeah, get, or you punched. attack your own Delirious Thrall with your own beater and make all the damages unresistible. Yeah, I think that's more corner case... I, I I mean, depending on how the game goes and what you're playing against, Pandora can have the, the opponent's hand burned away by the fourth activation. So yeah, this I'll, is not that unrealistic. Or you, or you have a garbage hand. like, And you can't relent when you do that either. So you actually have to win the duel versus it when you're punching it. So I, uh -huh. I do think that's going to be like Dream Livy, but eventually someone will <laughs> execute their opponent's model by executing their Delirious Thrall and handing it off. It's funny because their mirrored image attack is also another hand tax. It's gonna it's pseudo transmortis like in that your opponent just says shrugs and said, Okay, I'm not gonna cheat, then you cheat to match the suit. Instead of getting a card, you're getting a min three attack off of a five cost model that you've likely summoned. Yeah. So yeah. that's cute. Yeah, the the min the min three uh to like change up the value um uh progression on the attack seems kinda strong to me. Um when I when I when I tested this, so that seemed good. Okay, cool. So, question: If I punch something, if I go whatever first mate goes punches that thing, and misdirection does can't hit the first mate because the another model wording only refers to yeah. a third. That needs to be a third model there. Well, it yep. says in the bottom of the text, the attacking model may not be chosen for this. Effect. Oh, okay. That is that is where that is where it can't be chosen. Okay, fair. I uh, overread that. Thanks for putting me up to speed. Um, so as a hire, you both say no, thank you? Nope. Mm -hmm. No, nope. absolutely not. I mean, it doesn't have incorporeal, which always makes one sad when you, speak, when you play the ghosty cruise in either keyword. It only has movement five. Uh, and generally, I'm, I'd struggle to find five uh, stones in either of those crews to, be, to use on that. 
Yeah. Yeah. For Dreamer 1, you're looking at a Move 5 model that doesn't have the incorporeal for mobility, trying to unbury using either its Glimpse of Insanity, which is just a 5, or Threaten, which bizarrely has a pause to it, which is neat because it's got cool triggers, but it's yeah. not going to help you unbury. For Dreamer 2, it doesn't have Lucid Dream, so you're just it's, it's out the window. You're not hiring yep. it. Yeah, fair. It has clear mobility issues compared to most other um, models in that keyword. And for Pandora, I don't know. I think if I look at it, like if I would hire, if I personally would hire a model, I think I would rather hire a Sorrow than a Delirious Thrall if I need something that costs five Soul Zones and has to go somewhere and drop a ski marker. Yep, because yeah. they've got the Misery Loves company and can hop yeah. all over the table. So. Yeah. So if I once once I manage to flip that five or whatever they need, they're going to be actually fast. Um, cool. Yeah. We'll try that out next time when I play Pandora, which is going to be never cool. Um, so Delirious Fall, basically an only summon. Interesting. Yeah. Cool, guys. If you think we did not miss anything of importance, I'd like to jump over to what we in Europe um, <laughs> persist in uh, calling the Lich King and the giant liches. Maybe you are. I, uh, I, I, I'm just referring to the two podcasts we did already where this model actually showed up and it's going to be the Lich King forever now, um, which I think is a World of Warcraft expansion, but never mind that. So the Lich King will appear in the Swarm Fiend and Return keywords and it's also appearing in like all the factions because both of those are um, double faction keywords. So it's spread around three factions. And I'm interested to see what you guys make of this because I'm I'm still semi convinced. Um, as yeah, I don't know. I mean, you played a lot of the radar both, obviously. Do you think Swamp Fiend makes this thing appealing? Is that something you would hire there? Um, maybe with Z two because she can stun something and she has card draw. So you can maybe get the mask and you can keep them from unstunning themselves with her. So if you can find that mask and stun the thing you want, his blood magic can potentially be a do seven. You. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Z Zoroida, uh, Zoroida 2 is not really the spot where I'd see this guy. I mean, not that it's bad per se. I mean, you, you mentioned a couple of things. Though, lo looking just at his whole card, everything he does for either Zoroida other models just do better yeah i'm not his people are talking about him having the anti-heal but it's unsuited on a stat five attack for a dude that's move five and doesn't ignore terrain yeah and also yep. we, we gotta we gotta be honest at that point it is on a five six body with eight wounds and it's on the one inch melee attack um, nine wounds. Nine. He's okay. got nine. Oh, I'm sorry. He has nine, wo he has nine wounds in regeneration. He, he doesn't fall off from a stiff breeze. Yeah, That's good. But point. if 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 uh, the example that I always bring is, you go with that thing, you punch my Leviticus and hope to hit with a crow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you, yeah. you come to my Leviticus <laughs> and die. This model is worthless. <laughs> Thank you. This, I this mean, is the, this is the dice by removal argument of Malifo, isn't it? Kind uh, kind of kind of. I mean, dice to Doomblade. Yep, it's not good. Yep, dice to Doomblade. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, I mean the hemophilia trigger on the blood magic looks really really strong once you get that off. But yeah, there's apart from the Rider too, and. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. If I play Zoraida 2, I probably don't want that thing because I want models that can benefit more of my passive ability to discard cards and uh, take interact or walk actions so I can, I don't know, spam ballots votes or something like that. Yeah, which is why this this all, this whole thing has an asterisk. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 there's two things before I get to the asterisk. asterisk one thing uh, that I wanted to highlight was just ruthless. Because ruthless, uh, so so fighting terrifying and manipulative efficiently in Neverborn isn't that easy to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yes, there's Castori and there's the Rider, but I'm I'm blanking on anything else. Uh, Lucius too has ruthless. Oh yeah, Castor uh, too, as you mentioned, yeah. the Rider. Um, Carver, right? Yeah, yeah Carver, 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 oh, Carver. Carver. Yeah. Oh, yes. Out of keyword I think... Carver, I mean, come on. 
that's the ruthless isn't so hard because there's a ton of high willpower stuff like in its own keyword bad juju is willpower yeah but manipulative um yeah the manipulative is harder but you just see less manipulative because it's generally uh, considered a pretty weak because you just focus and punch them you're gonna if you're if you're spending focus on the attack generally it's because you intended to cheat uh the damage flip as well as the hit because you wanted to cheat the damage flip so it's just not i don't think it's i mean it's only a one i mean it's it's a fair point it's a one three five track also i mean you're ruthless you hit the manipulative model for one and three maybe i don't know Uh, yeah if you're not spending focus for his attack then what are you what are you doing (laughs) yeah but it does get a built-in pause if they're on oh no ignores negs if they're below half that's what it is no no then yeah yeah. that's actually pretty neat though the the, the whole the whole asterisk i was alluding to was just him summoning leeches but let's be real the whole the whole thing with zoroida where i see him maybe being a smidge above the widow weaver but only a smidge if at all is that he can pull out the leeches and the leeches then in turn can do the whole scheme running discarding cards to drop scheme markers yada yada stuff okay like zoraida too okay yeah um interesting i mean the leeches uh we get to those in a in a bit they have latch on so they reduce defense if they're in base contact with something so that could be kind of nice but it's not it, it's not it's not the selling point in itself yeah it's not it's it's a sa- it's a safe and enab- an enabling ability on the le- we'll, we'll get to the leeches in a second i just want to highlight one more thing so- sorry mate uh, <laughs> blood letting. yeah condition blood removal letting. you got condition, condition removal. removal yeah um, on a purple on, model as a bonus action on a model that can have secondary uses i think is fairly interesting I particularly like the fact that it does one irreducible damage to their target to Nekiman. Blood. <laughs> Nekiman. Yeah. Triggering. It, 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 this is one of my top three. In fact, it's my top one and my top three for Nekima. Uh Putting in Leech King with uh, Demon Domi Mommy. Nekima 2. Uh, and just having a model that A, removes conditions, B, triggers Black Blood on demand, and see does more stupid summoning bullshit i think yeah, my <laughs> big thing with nekama 2 is that pretty much everything she does is card agnostic except sometimes when you you know cheat the severes to hit something for six because you're just like okay i take a point you take a point for everything and that's one of her strengths she doesn't rely on cards as much as a lot of stuff does and this guy really needs cards to work yep. yeah. so that's i don't I say you don't go down that road, but she also really hates being stunned. So the range eight on the bloodletting that also splashes black blood is cute. I think it's funny that he's got evasive, so he doesn't heal from Gwil. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's living the other models thing. in return. To like, oh look, he'll heal from Gwil, and you can pass off the. Oh, never mind, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of sad though. Kind of you sad. Say <laughs> Atherac. Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? Um, what? Something about two wrongs not making a right. <laughs> what, what? Guys, what? What? What are? What are those names? What are you throwing around here? Who's Anorak? I don't know him. Come yeah. on. I think maybe he could make him work in um, <laughs> Dora stunning stuff and getting mileage out of hemophilia because I feel like that's the mm. coolest thing on his card. My big problem with Clue of Leeches is that it's an attack action, not a tactical. So it both respects concealment and yeah. manipulate it oh no it doesn't respect me love it <laughs> no, no. but it's an opposed duel and it's only stat five without the suit if they're not below half if they're below half then it's you know a six with a crow to summon the leech but oftentimes why don't you just use something to remove yeah i mean off? i mean that's that's the thing for clue of leeches and uh, this whole card design i mean either Mommy can help uh, the opponent get uh, under beneath half, or Daddy can. Yeah, Ha-ha, maybe. Segue. <laughs> Uh, because I like this guy very much in Castori. I, I listened to the Neverborn, uh, not Neverborn, the, the Rezos podcast, and I strongly disagree. I think this is a great model in Castori. That, that is that is that is absolutely fair. I mean, I, I explained that, and I think where did this guy show up yet again in the Bayou podcast? Where um. 
well, I think in the um, the Reza episode, we were a bit like, okay, who has an opinion on that? And everyone was like, yeah, you have one, right? And then it was a bit like, okay. And nobody could make it like work in his head um, so far. So if you're saying this this guy is great in Castor, then take it away. I mean, go ahead. Explain to me yeah, why. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, I, I, um, Castor 2, I do the stupid, obvious kidnap bullshit. Like everybody under the sun does with him. And he works increasingly well with uh, in that tactic as a model that activates after Castori himself. Mm -hmm. Because what I generally try to do is to not kill the model I kidnap right away, but to leave it on like very few hit points, ideally one hit point, for the start of the next round to instantly get activation, uh, activation advantage. Uh, and kill him in my first activation. Or if they're in the uh, aura of my urn bearer, they kill themselves with the first activation and become a glorified pass token. And considering that, that you can go forward with Castori, kidnap something, uh, deal some damage in it, likely get it under half, and yep. then just uh, leisurely stride forward, walk forward with the Leech King, uh, summon a leech out of there, and then the leech summons the second leech, possibly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I think that's really great. That's one thing. The other thing is just in Castori or in the return keyword uh, in general, everything that does stupid overheal shenanigans is really good because it does really unexpected things if you're not aware of them. Like just this, I have what they, uh, what they are having ability means that if Castori starts within four inches of him, he can instantly get a two-inch move by damaging himself with Faith in the Flesh, healing the Leech King, Leech King bouncing the heal back to Castori, and Gwil just pretending like Castori overhealed. And you're instantly getting a two-inch third extension for Castori just out of that singular spot. And of course, if you're in an uh, still in your unpack and you have an Iron Bearer and a Cavern Nephilim, you can get something stupid like five shield tokens if my math isn't off and six inches of movement, four of those in Castori if you want to, for uh, Cavern Nephilim and Castori in the millisecond the Cavern Nephilim activates. And that's solely enabled by I'll have what they are having. Okay. So there's a lot of good things he does in the context of Castori as to how you want to unpack the crew, what your basic strategy is with kidnapping and killing key models. And in this whole machinery of kidnapping and killing key models, you also pull out additional scheme runners in the form of leeches and uh, suddenly make your scenario play more efficient. That's I love him and I, I think he's great in Castori too. Okay, uh, Tana, what do you think? Castori? Yes, That's, no? Hearing him talk about it is kind of an enabler and I guess it opens up the sword to be able to go after Castor activates, which can have value. I don't know that it's worth eight. And I don't generally kidnap when I play him. I throw him in and he just oh, lives. Fun. And, and he lives in the opponent's deployment zone. <laughs> I mean, that's fun too. That's fair. Because <laughs> I often put um, inhuman reflexes on him when I know the opponent won't have ruthless because the terrifying 12 with inhuman reflexes is hilarious. Yeah, that's fair. It's just, I, 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 these days I still play Barbaros in this kidnap strategy and he, the Leech King just perfectly slots into that position where Barbaros sits you right now. You would leave out Barbaros instead. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Um, that surprises Barbaros me. Barbaros notably does not die to Doomblade though. So I don't know about that. <laughs> that, that is true. Um, Barbie, Barbie, Barbie can do a good job and i think he alone does a lot of pushes on castor anyway so right six inches i mean it's yeah. it's 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 for it's for you to decide i guess um how this fits into your style and if you get all the effects that you want and um i think arguably blood magic finishing something off after the kidnap is also kind of interesting i mean you can summon the, yeah, the you can summon the leeches and then you just blood magic it uh, off the table and laugh and that's also nice um I heard you mention uh, Gwil as well as the Leech King in a list. That makes me think like, okay, I, I think both I, Gwil is a great model and the Leech King I'm still undecided on, but 
those are both models that don't play the scenario all too well like is that all left to your two cavern nephilims in that case um well cavern nephilim one general actually just one uh i'm i've been mulling around some ideas in my head with actually taking two of those uh what are the other minions called i keep forgetting them the blood sacrifice thingies the, uh, the green blood, ones blood vessels blood vessels thank you so yeah, I've been mulling some ideas around with uh, a cavern nephilim and uh, one or two blood vessels. There's always the wicked dolls. Uh, I have to do some testing in, in that regard. Though, the other thing is, if you play the Leech King and you pull out your leeches, you're suddenly up to scheme runners. So, you're probably fine with a single cavern. Okay, fair. Um, interesting. So we see more diversity there. That is that is kind of nice. Um, so we've heard of Castor two. Is there a thing like Castor one? I mean, I know I have. I've, people have been trying to sell me Castor one, um, and I remember you being um, within that bunch of people trying to sell me Castor one. So is Leech King something that you would um, actually consider when doing Castor one, or doesn't he fit that build? Yeah, not really in this case. Uh, Castori 2 works with the Leech King well uh, because everything Castori 2 does plays literally into the Leech King's hand. The same thing cannot be said for Castori 1. Castori 1 does his thing, he moves your opponent's stuff around, he snacks on a model every other turn and eats it, and uh, while his whole crew is doing whatever they're doing, trying to score, doing free actions, placing three uh, scheme markers, and so on and so forth, and just being action efficient as much as they can. And this guy doesn't really fit the bill in this. At least the, the main issue here is that a lot of Leech King's efficiency literally comes from the opponent being beneath half. So you need this under half model on your opponent's side and in his range to get your leeches out efficiently, to do stuff with blood magic. And if that's not the case, he is too expensive for eight points. Mm. Okay, sounds fair. Uh, Turner, d did you hear of Castor 1 yet? That what? Who is C Castor 1? There's yeah. a one before the stat 7 men 3 guy that gets two blast off charges? There's a different version of that guy? I don't know. Yeah, you, People in you Germany. haven't lived until you opportunistically kill totems with the sword splash damage. <laughs> Enabled okay. by Castor 1 overhealing himself. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not. I mean, it's a. Suddenly you get leeches that you can actually kill to get his. Uh, Thing for dropping scheme markers off of guys and i guess the additional models that you don't like the summons you don't care about taking damage to do interacts at the end of the turn is something so maybe it enables his kit also he stuns things with his uh definitely master level ap <laughs> range eight that stuns the stackers <laughs> so it, it, it works in that way i just I don't know. There maybe there's enough going on synergistically that it it all ends up working out. And I mean, maybe there's something to be said for being the dark horse. Your opponent brings in stuff, assuming you're playing the big towering figure. Uh, when you bring in the emaciated um, Bill Nahi from the first Underworld movie. Indeed, that reference. Although there's there's all this <laughs> redeeming. There's always the redeeming bloodletting on the Leech King. I mean, we can't we can't put this one completely away. There's always this option of having just the condition removal as a bonus action for this model. So uh, they, they, an argument can be made that depending on your matchup, you might want to consider him over Serena. Yeah, interesting. We're gonna see less Serena. And that's gonna be hmm, the end. That is uh, that is a big change. Um, awesome. So if we look at the leeches that he summons, which we were talking about for like a long time now, um, these are only summons for you as well, because that was the consensus I got from basically everyone else I talked to. Or I don't see myself. I don't see myself hiring them. Yeah, I see yeah. myself summoning two of them, yeah. which is why there's spot two technically on my Nekima top three, because I will play with them in Nekima because of stupid summoning shenanigans. But I don't see myself hiring them. Okay, fair. Yeah, why would you? Why would you hire this? I don't when know. The, Let's what, a, 
a wicked doll is three soul stones. <laughs> like what it's got going for is move six uh, and stealth, but a wicked doll has creep along and yeah. stealth for two less soul stones. So. But this wouldn't have died to a single Jin moderate. Mm. I mean, if I just placed it better, it wouldn't have died either. Okay, cool. That's, Sorry, okay. That's I'm... not the model's fault. That's my fault. <laughs> okay, so not getting more sword out of you there. Sad. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, mean, to, I mean, to be fair, I played. I played this morning. I got completely. Um, Jin did a number on me and like wow. killed three models in two turns. I was like, yeah, sure. Get lost. Yeah, mm. I think they'll do work as summons. They do have sense weakness, so even though they summon in base contact with something, they could leave it with an with if, as long as there's something else they can sense weakness to. They can move out of the engagement, which is neat. Uh, penetrating stench is good and often overlooked. It gets better when you've got more of it. So if you've got two leeches standing on somebody that hasn't activated yet, and they activate, they either have to discard two or discard one and gain stun. That's very good. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. They, they're great, but just not too high. Not too higher. <laughs> uh, do they do they get summoned with full health? By the way, yes, uh, they do. Off and of Lich King yes, summon, no. off their self replicating summon, the new one takes two. Okay, that is, that is interesting. I mean, that is um that is eight wounds on, and they are they are body blocking like a lot of stuff. They are fifty millimeter bases. Right, and they Good. also have a heal built into their melee attack, and there's an additional trigger for a heal. So yeah. that's kind of like and you really the... want to one shot this because if you leave it around for an activation, it might just heal itself back. Oh yeah, and uh, I, I might be sounding like a broken record or too loudly banging the drum, but Castori and uh, not Castori, uh, the Leech King can remove the slow of the Leech, leech he summons. But so that leech can actually do two actions immediately. Yeah, that's good. That's actually good. Oh. I mean, another reason to take it in Nekama is when you summon a dog, the leech king can remove stun from it, so it can summon two. <laughs> For instance, so, no, I mean, I really mean, this is, this is <laughs> come on, but this is this is a re this is a reasonable sequencing with the uh, leech king. Um, if he has to walk up to whatever Castori to kidnapped. Um, that's under half, uh, pulls out a leech uh, with his second AP, takes the slow of the leech, the leech then activates, summons the second leech, bites something, finds the drink blood trigger, and heals both of them back to full. Huh. That is a reasonable summoning. It's not that magical Christmas landy as one might expect. No, no, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. I mean, you, and you are looking at doing leech king, Within Nekima and dogs and Nekima summoning, so it will be dogs, leeches, and all the small shitters and stuff and growing. Babies. And obviously Nephilim. Yeah, I'm. I'm already having a lot of fun. Um, Look, I just, I just want to see my opponent's face once after I put thirty additional soul stones on the table. You can, I don't care what happens after that. I just want to do that. Oh, you can. You can play as army and do it like in one turn. That's not. That's nah. Not, nah. Okay. The, fair. The fun, of, the fun of playing Neverborn is that you have to really yeah, finagle yeah. to get the shenanigans. Yeah, you have to. You have to work for your money, and and, and instead of playing thunders, who actually right now do not have to work for anything in my opinion but okay um yeah cool leeches yeah I, i'm interested i'm i'm i haven't played against it or with it and sadly um some some committee or other decided to have an event without um ashes of mali for models for some reason i don't know i i don't know people responsible for this otherwise i would invite them to nope. this podcast and uh uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> I'm asking them about it. So moving on, we have one last purple model, it seems like. That's not a lot of models, but anyway. And um we um yeah, we, we talked about it, how we pronounced this, and um the um favorite was either it's the new ten soulstone model or the Sissy Sisters. And I think it should be be pronounced the Sisigi sis, sisters. It's very unclear to me where that name giving comes from right now, and I haven't Googled it so far. And yeah, if anyone has a good idea, leave it in the comments. Uh, basically, basically make a video of yourself saying that over and over. Yeah. That would be great. I mean, I, I will always insist on the Romy Schneider reference in this one, yeah. or Bully Parade, depending on where you come from. And yes, sorry, Turner, you won't get that reference. Probably not. 
Okay. You don't know what I know, but oh. I don't. I don't know oh, that. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's maybe there's there maybe there's a secret group of people who translate these uh, movies into English and watch them all day and turn as part of that, huh? Yeah. If we were talking yeah. Russian, I would believe you in English. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, fair. So this is the new exciting ten souls. I mean, most of the factions got a new exciting ten soul stone enforcer to be. Um, hired or not uh, depending on this um so this one got people more excited from what i am picking up how sure. how are you guys thinking about this i mean the the card re is pretty empty unless you discover that it has two different upgrades so um Turner, what do you think this this is a good model that you would hire uh yeah this is a pretty phenomenal model Awesome. It's the second, well, since the nerf of the Black Blood Shaman models, it's another option that lets you generate focus for a master because right now all we've got is Maurice. So that's really good. Um, it's a really strong anti armor model because it has the armor pin trigger on the gun form. Um, it's always got three AP. It's got ranged scheme drop. Like this thing is, it's got, it's either got bulletproof or combat finesse, depending on which one you need in the matchup. It's very good. It's very good. Well, so sounds great. So how does it, how does a turn of that look like? Um, what would you do with it in the first turn of the game? It's probably going to walk up and try to give stuff focus with its lure because that's it's double AP transfer. Like this, if let's say that the new Fey models have no impact at all on how Titania plays, if this thing walks forward and lures Titania and gives her a focus, that is huge. <laughs> Six inches of movement plus she gets a focus. Now suddenly, and, and she's all the thing is also a threatening piece. Like, yeah, indeed, what? indeed. Um, so. Let's let's talk about this model for a bit because it's a bit confusing to actually show this off um, in the video. Um, so the Scissors Sisters have a stat six baseline uh, apart from size, where they are um, size three, and they got three actions on the card, which are lure and then fellow knight, which is um, actually a shockwave for damage two, and the moon's protection, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, I think it's something like a heroic intervention if i'm not completely mistaken it basically is heroic it's intervention basically yeah. heroic intervention so you get uh, to choose a model within six flip a six get to push um six inches towards it yeah and taking it yeah it's, it's it's heroic intervention yeah hooray cool so moon's intervention uh protection i mean um and it has a search trigger and that is that but you get to from the front of card ability treat one of those abilities as a bonus which i think is kind of exciting so what Turner just said as you can move forward, you can lure a model as a bonus, give it focus, and then still do moon's protection on something um, your opponent does, and then take a swing at it. And that is actually, that's quite the distance traveled. Mm, what is your favorite pick of upgrade in the early turns? Or is it completely dependent on what your opponent is bringing? It's completely dependent. And on turn one, it's unlikely to even matter. But... Yeah. Okay, I'm asking that because first time I played against that, I killed that thing turn one because my opponent ah, did the pick the wrong upgrade. <laughs> yep, picked the incorrect choice. So he he, he, he went yeah. for he went for armor for for bulletproof, and it got windmill slammed by something in melee. I mean, let's let's be fair. If you're still a bit apart from each other, bulletproof is the quote unquote natural choice. Mm. No, I'm. I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer because I like this model very much. It is spot number three on my to test with Nikki, my top three. Okay. Um, um, but its its strongest upside is also its greatest downside, and that's just the sheer amount of flexibility. I mean, we can uh, wax and wane, haha, uh, about the fact that you Let's see what you did there. Have to, it's the moon uh, pun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, you have, that you can actually make the wrong decisions in uh, even before activating the model, meaning you can pick the wrong phase of the moon, so the wrong moon upgrade, so melee mode versus shooty mode. And uh, you can pick the wrong quote unquote bonus action uh, because you're not reading the situation right or anything. So that's that's one thing. The other thing is you pay stones for this flexibility. So it's a 10 hit point, six baseline, 
model with regeneration plus one and no other defensive tech. So if, if you take this model, just give it an ability to fix its bonus action, just give it one of the cards and, I don't know, give it eight hit points, we'd be looking at a seven-point model. But this is a 10-point model and it pays one to two uh, stones points just for the fact of the matter that it has the flexibility to frankly make a wrong decision <laughs> In, indeed I, I mean you could also turn one like activate it too late and your opponent goes for it before you gave it an upgrade it's basically a defenseless model cards yeah. cards not with you know um, cards withholding which can be in your favor or not which you can sometimes not influence Sometimes, yeah, I mean, sometimes your opponent just goes har 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 and shoots it uh, for five before it activates, and then it's then it's already devalued quite a bit. Um, now, if we look at yeah. the upgrades, like let's talk about the upgrades for a second. There, we got the um, the pay light or the dark stone. Um, the dark stone is the melee upgrade with the aforesaid pierce. No, it's the oh, that's the shooting upgrade. Okay, I'm talking bullshit. So dark pay light, the yeah. melee one. Yeah, so Darkstone is uh, the range upgrade. It gives you a Void Doom, which I find very interesting um, because this makes the Black Joker count as a red... No. Oh, no. No. Uh, it gives you... Just you... Ignore it. Ah, okay, so we, that is... We, ne we never bought player do know what the Void Doom Yeah, does. you know that. I, I thought it was like... Um, it was like what um, the Hanged had, which would be actually quite exciting i got excited That's there for a second doomed. yeah that no. is forever doomed okay avoid doom. we, we mentioned that we never won't have to actually work for our stuff we don't just get stuff <laughs> um yeah that is i, I think Neverborn is a very um very very challenging and very uh, engaging way to spend your time playing i think it's uh, always on the knife's edge must be really great um so this gives it bulletproof plus two which is nice it gives it um a trigger on fellow knight with, to remove from um, ski markers which i think is interesting uh, yep. having ranged uh, ski marker removal uh, on a shockwave and the piercing darkness shooting action which is two four five at range eight no gun action with armor piercing or devastating strike which i find a bit insulting because devastating strike is when resolving this action's damage flip receives a positive and the target suffers plus blast damage um so for yeah. a 13 ram and another Severe, we're looking at six, uh, six blast, so six to four. That could be ten damage. Um, that, that is an impressive amount of damage you can do with that thing. So yeah, I mean the the dark stone side shows off one of the major roles this model can do. I mean we're we're all in agreement it's a three AP model, and three AP models generally are good, though. I'd see this one with the Dark Stone as basically the main upgrade you have on them mm -hmm. uh, to be a flank runner. So a mobility piece running in the flank, yes, in your uh, unpack, they can efficiently lure something out and give it a focus to make it a 4 AP, because why the fuck not? And after that, they spend their life on the sidelines, as in on the flanks of the board, and trying to score for you there. Because with Bulletproof, they are somewhat protected against shooting attacks. And if the opponent doesn't get there, and more importantly, the trigger claimed by the C can remove your opponent's scheme markers with an action that places scheme markers. So when you get her in, them in a good position, you can do bullshit stuff like shoot something twice and then remove their ski marker by placing your own ski marker and then score with that so there's there's a lot of potential to use them in this particular way uh, mm -hmm. and the situation calls for it you can actually use that flexibility switch into your melee mode and then just wreck face okay so seems interesting would you say that is um, something you would use this model for ton or is this more a centerpiece for you I think it's going to be contextual to how, like, the list that it's in, and it's going to run differently. I think uh, this thing is going to yeah. find a home with Dreamer 2 because 666 stat line is mm -hmm. a really good defensive stat line when your hand is all severe. <laughs> um, so I think there it's going to be more of a centerpiece model because if you put combat finesse on it and you're holding all severes, they just aren't going to be able to deal with it. But it's also going to depend on what your opponent's playing. Um, I think in Lucius 2, which is another really good place to take this, uh, the gun is going to get more use because if you mimic it, Lucius's mimics can 
bake in the ram for devastating strike and then suddenly all they need is just a one severe and they've got straight flips to to hit with their two four six um blast which is because you bake in the ram and it's uh, not a gun it's a ranged attack so it ignores cover <laughs> that sounds kind of disgusting yep yeah. <laughs> yep. And okay. Lucius also really appreciates the turn one lure, Wax and Wayne. Hell, you can copy that lure, and then it's a and it's attack action, so you can lure him twice. Like if you use the doppelganger to copy the sister's lure, you can bake in the mask for her lure on Lucius. And congratulations, you just need a five to move Lucius six and give him a focus. Yeah, it's, that that sounds kind of handy to have. Mm. Yeah. Also. I, I, I think it needs to be in a place you can support it because it's going to be very card hungry as been pointed out with just the six six and then either combat finesse or bulletproof like it's just going to take hits and die if it if you don't have the high cards to keep it alive like yeah people are gonna actually be puts, puts them very squarely in pretty much any crew that have solid card draw so that that already limits it to like basically lucius yeah, yeah. Zareda. Lucius and Dream Dreamer too. Zareda is another good one yeah. because she, she gets a lot of mileage out of obeying this thing. Yep. Yeah, I mean the the only downside I see with them in Dreamer two is just the simple fact that it's a ten point model where you can't hop out with Dreamer himself. Uh, that that's actually a, a real downside for me at least with Dreamer two. But I, I I want to be able to pop out wherever I want to, and I can't from them. So that. Puts yeah. them a bit down in my rating for Dreamer 2. Yeah, also, Dance also means that you... What are you dropping? Like Widow Weaver? Or a, like, a Daydream and a Madness? That is too yeah, loose. something along those lines. Mm -hmm. That is too loose well, dreams. If you're, that is... if you're losing Widow Weaver, you're not dropping anything else, because then you just don't need Soul Stones for Widow Weaver at all. Yeah, fair. I mean, I usually take Widow Weaver and Banner Snatch together, and then you're actually losing a lot if you drop one of them. Yeah. Oh, I like never play Bandersnatch. Yeah, that is that is the two of them enable incredibly stupid mobility bullshit. So I like it. <laughs> mm, yeah, that is that is something that uh, Dreamer players are kind of divided upon. Uh, I've if uh, <laughs> Bandersnatch <laughs> dies to Doomblade, so I don't think. <laughs> oh, for, oh, to be fair, Bandersnatch for me is a walk forward place net for widow a web marker for widow weaver and then hide model yeah widow weaver i I felt after turn one she gets around pretty good on her own so but it, like the matchup that i would take this instead of widow weaver a good example is um oh what's his name <laughs> uh leviticus because you put on the can't cheat in melee upgrade and then you go engage him because you're way faster than he is and then he either disengages and shoots you twice which doesn't kill you or he walks up to you because you've got a two inch and he can't cheat to try to punch you to death and when you're taking three men three swings back at him he just kind of will die yeah at some point but <laughs> we, we can put that to the test i'm i'm, I'm game for that <laughs> we, can. Yeah, we, we already mentioned that the the basic issue with this model really is that uh, either you can already be in the wrong phase of the moon or your activation order doesn't allow you to switch to the right phase of the moon and uh, if you're spending the whole game in just one of the phases you're basically playing 10 stones for an eight stone model so eh, i don't know yeah or don't... maybe maybe nine i don't know how we how we maybe value nine, this yeah. i don't know huh interesting i mean the the pay light session mobile warrior is something that seems good to me it's always very handy to have and um three four five it's not super exciting in neverborn i think i think neverborn has has enough stuff that does three four five damage but it gives you burst of speed three, so four, you can declare charge while engaged hit for burst of speed push on and then still do stuff They'll still drop a scheme marker and throw the shockwave for another scheme marker. You think it's yeah. One, yeah. one of the ten soul stones model ten soul stone models that is most suited for um the current gaining grounds, and not only a big block of meat that you can hire if you like big blocks of meat. Fair, although all hate chunko croc. 
Yeah, it, 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 the, it is awesome. It's it's a crocodile. I mean, what would you say? Also, Bayou oh, has... I, I, found, I found an amazing proxy for my Rasputina, which is just a chubby it's... little crocodile sitting. And I, I'm, yeah. I'm praising Choco Croc Elephants. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I would be very offended if you play that against me on a tournament. But okay. You, you're playing Neverborn this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have Neverborn pack. Oh, okay, very good, very good. Who? Dodge that one. Um, awesome. So that are the Sisygid sisters, or however we like to pronounce them. <laughs> the new Tin Soulstone Purple Enforcer. They are, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Awesome. Um, seems seems good. Seems good though. Um, and we got the honorable mention edition now because we've run out of purple models and we got to switch to some arcanist models um this has two cards but i think it's basically one model i don't know if you guys agree but i'm yeah it's one I'm, model i should be i mean there... i'm all about that elk about that elk no trouble though um, yeah the octo elk i just still does have some some thing i mean that th there is potential though we could just go over the cards first and then because it's a lot uh, yeah, it is. It is quite a lot. So um, the model we are talking about is, of course, from the Chimera and December keywords. So we see that in Mark is only in Neverborn. And then again, and Rasputina, if we're playing Arcanists, which um, we are only doing if somebody forces. Oh, no, you, you're playing it by. OK, I, I'm lying. I have played Arcanists before, so I'm going to shut up now. Um, so those are the keywords. Um, Cedra is an eight soul stone and force a beast model and it's basically uh carnivorous elk without eyes kind of thing it looks, eldritch elk eldritch elk it looks yeah, yeah it looks like the cthulhu elk, cthulhu elk himself it's, it's i think he's cute yeah but he's kind of disturbing like if you're not used to mali for model design he's kind of like okay why did it need to be that now what okay um because because uh, what's it? Uh, Stranger Things sold a lot of uh, that did a lot of made a lot of money. Uh, sold oh, a yeah. lot of net subscriptions. Oh yeah, in, indeed, indeed it is. I, I think it's it's great design. It's only just um, who 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 has thought this up? Cool, and he he is something. I'm gonna say the least. So um, who of you wants to say something about Cedra? Thanks, like I said, but... I'm all about that elk, about that elk, no trouble. <laughs> so silly. I think in blue, this thing's going to be taken out of keyword all the time. If you, yeah. if you think damned is good, then <laughs> a relationship ended with damned or uh, the blessed even. Like, that thing's better than that. Just... Yeah, it is. It is. Why is it better, though? Give, give, us, a, give us a hint. Um, it has demise eternal. It gets to start the game with an upgrade attached. It is a min three model. <laughs> Let's move. Like, uh, what else do you need? Oh, it's movement six. Look, it's movement it six. moves yeah. up around and has onwards. So it's oh yeah, it has onwards. One of the best yeah. bonus sections in the game. And remember, one of those upgrades can be wings. So we're talking about a move seven model with well, flight. Well, it gets to pick whichever one it wants, and it doesn't need like it can disengage itself with call of the mountain because it's not other and when it does so it can change the upgrade if it needs to it's just it's it's absurd yeah, <laughs> yeah was... it does so much all by itself there's the, 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 there is even potential to doing stupid things with uh uh just transforming itself back and then retransforming after being sightless snow but i think that's the smallest part of everything just the flames of change alone uh, the flames of change trigger built in on a tactical action alone makes this model more than just viable downright essential in marcus 2 yeah yeah and it, i mean it basically gives you the chance to hire another re really really good model into marcus where before you had to somehow tax in stuff as well my, yeah, now you don't need to take um, that many of those or in, initiate. In initiate yeah. because you just get the upgrade for free this, with this. I thing. mean, I didn't, I didn't use, I haven't used initiates for over a year at this point in Marcus too. But I've also spent a lot of time solitaire managing my turns just to get the distances right and get all the upgrades where I want to. And I still have a headache from that. So okay. I appreciate this upgrade very much. Yeah, I mean. I mean, fair. Initiates are kind of 
kind of whatever models. I think hiring one doesn't hurt you, though, because it's just a body that walks around the table. It can drop ski markers like every other model in the game, so there's that yeah, but for it. the same price, you can get birds with movement seven that fly. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I'm hype about this. There's basically everything else in the Chimera keyword that I would like to hire from an aesthetic point of view before I hire an initiate. For me, at least. Oh, yeah. Okay, but, but, back, back, back yeah, to the back, back to, to the Sandra. yeah, back to the elk. Um, cool. So this is only for eight soul stones. This does read a bit like it should be nine, if not more. So yeah. it can drop two ski markers that are six inches apart or seven if it has flight. Um, the fact that it starts with an upgrade, regardless. Um, where of... are you getting seven from? I'm getting ten. You get yeah. Base size, 50, 50 base size. Okay, yeah, fair. Oh, we can, we can, we can score protected alone. GG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in one turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> GG. That that is that is not at all too good. Okay, fair. Um, other 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 than that, I mean, in blue, in blue, there I would be hard put not to put soulstone cash on this and laugh all day, whatever. I don't think you even need it. Yeah, I think you. I think I mean, you it, has, it has the same issue that every Chimera model has, and that it's that it's at very least defensive capabilities are just just a smidge under what other models in the same price range have. Just a smidge. In since it has demise eternal, I'm actually not mad, but you do see that you have like this half a soul stone quarter of a soul stone that didn't go into defense or willpower that is assumed to be one of the upgrades we have to be fair about that mm, yeah uh, that is true we, it's but... got demise eternal yeah <laughs> so... yeah which is why I'm, which is not as bad as with old cats or uh, whatever but it's still there i mean it's still visible i mean it At costs least... as much as the old cats and i think it does it does like oh yeah at least the same oh, yeah. amount of work depending on what the, oh. what you use it for because it gets an upgrade and can change it on itself which is i mean that is super flexible uh, i think disguised on this is great armor on this is great butterfly jump is great and yeah of course i mean maybe you're not always would do an upgrade on this but i think it can benefit from an additional upgrade just to even be more efficient because it's min three, I mean, it can it can two shot most uh, flank runners, which is what it will be up against. And yep, seeing broken. seeing that this is only sta is it only an eight soulstone model, it is hilariously overstated against everything that's that six in my opinion, because it there is no competition on the flank basically, and until you get something like the first mate, and even then, I'm not sure it, the first mate can finish this off easily. No, it's basically Manos. Yeah. Yep. I think that's the best comparison you could make. It's a Manos with only one inch melee yeah. and no extended reach. That, yeah. that, that's probably the best comparison you could make for this model. And it's, it's super interesting that they gave it Demise Eternal because Demise Eternal was removed from two models in the game already that had the same role because it was so freaking problematic for the game that those models dominated and that was Manos and yeah. uh, Midnight Stalker. And now they give these demises back to models. That makes me a bit annoyed because I want my Midnight Stalker back, please. Because Demise not? Eternal is just problematic on flankers because they're not in the middle of the action and whatever's hitting them is not going to be able to kill it twice, which is nah. where this thing is going to live. Yeah. Probably with Disguised and Stealth. Yeah, so. Disguised Stealth and Terrible Bite Trigger to heal itself. It's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, why not? It's so squishy, it needs self-healing. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, it, it, it also has Grim Feast. Grim Feast, just in case you need. I'm, I'm, it. Feel, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling highly trolled here, um, which is probably the correct <laughs> assumption. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah fair. Um, I mean, it, it genuinely makes me excited to play Marcus Two again. I'm honest. I wouldn't be as, I wouldn't be as annoyed about about this model if it would be on a purple card. I think the fact yeah. that it's a blue card makes me m more. Best more angry than it. It's, it Best yeah, nine soul stone versatile blue ever got. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an eleven soul stone versatile. I, I think that's fine. I it's better than the riders, though. So. 
Nah, I don't well, the think... thing is, I guess you could put Soulstone Cash on it and not feel bad on, about it because it's three, four, five. It's gonna earn the Soulstones back. Yeah, it's gonna earn one back for sure. And remember that if you, for whatever reason, uh, decide to actually transform into Sightless Snow, you do keep your Soulstone Cash. Yeah, sure. That is um... without discarding upgrades. Yep. Yeah, I mean that is that is necessary because I think otherwise it would lose the upgrade and couldn't attach it anymore. Um, oh, the um, the Chimera upgrade. Yeah, awesome. So we got this one, and yeah, I think Marcus is really looking looking kind of good now that it that he has that model in the current GG. I was I was not against playing him in this GG before that model dropped, to be honest, because it's uh, this GG is probably right down his alley. Yeah, but he that's can do good things. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. we could spend a couple of minutes on Sightless Snow just. To yeah, do it. no, no, of course we will go to Side to Snow. I mean, uh, we we seem to agree that Cedra seems to be a bit good, and yeah, we only wish it would be purple. So weird if you're listening, just make this a purple model so we can uh, laugh at the Arcanist that they have to play um, uh, have to play Rasputina to get this because they don't deserve this. Cool. So yeah. now that we've said that, um, Side to Snow is the um woman that the um the Cthulhu elk can turn into. And what's what's her role? I mean I I I, I still don't see I don't I still don't see myself transforming the elk into this, but if you should want to do that, what is her role? What does she do for your crew? Um this this might sound like trolling and it partially is, but her role is to place an ice pillar and then turn into Cedra. Yeah. Seems What's seems reasonable. I can't see make if your opponent does something silly and you've got focus on your Cedra and the card to turn into her mid activation where you'll do the the push of call call the mountain on yourself, push forward, turn into Cedra, and then shoot with the gun. With the yeah. breath of frost, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you get primal runes. I mean, it's it's not like you're not profiting from that because this actually the, because the thing is, um, when you transform, don't you place? Oh no, you don't. In that case, you don't place an ice pillar, right? You no. would have to have one already. Yep. But then you well, could technically place a scheme marker if you had one as a bonus action. So there there is some stupid shenanigans you could pull off by just transforming back and forth and placing scheme markers in between. But that's the only thing I see is if your opponent gives you an opportunity where four with a two, three, four with double blast is somehow very strong and you've got the cards in hand to make it work. And then probably you also want another ram to turn back into Cedra so you don't just die because this one does not have. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even looking at the damage at this point. I mean, it's literally just using the call of the mountain to move wherever you need to be. Uh, and transform into Sightless Snow, use Primal Runes to drop a Scheme Marker as a bonus action, and then use Breath of Frost to turn back into Cedra and basically getting the damage and the staggered opportunistically. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a more very weird corner case like power this model has. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I mean, Breath of Frost can, uh, can actually um, use a Ice Pillar Marker. Um, nope. Law draw loss and range from ice pillar markers. Yeah, keeper of the peak. When taking. Oh, she's keeper of the peak. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's and. weaker ice mirror. And that's also it's... from friendly beasts, which I th find kind of interesting because you oh, can Jesus. you can basically you can basically uh, do breath of frost via all of your all of your crew basically. <laughs> well, but... in six inch range to. But her, you got to push so... seven inches before you switched. <laughs> Oh right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, you, you, if you got like a a mauler um, engaging something, and then just breath of frost on it, and give it staggered, so it's now engaged by a two inch engage and staggered, and the mauler has butterfly jump, seems cool. I don't know. I mean, sure, that's that's cute, but on the other hand, let's be real, you could just bite it twice. Yeah, you could also be dropping like two ski markers that are ten inches apart. I don't. Yeah. Uh, there's basically no argument against doing this from a points perspective, apart from you killing something, which you can also do with a with the elk. So yeah, um, this seems a seems a seems a weird model. I mean, the attacks are actually okay because they're all stat six, but not 
absolutely horribly exciting. Um, yeah, and that is the sightless snow. Anything I yeah, missed? maybe the only the only redeeming factor she has is that she's basically a fixed pertinent vogel. Yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty much the only redeeming factor. I or the, the best thing I have to say about sightless snow, and that is a hundred percent on the back of her other side. Yeah, that is that is true. I mean, thirty. I don't know. Ferdy has some fringe uses, but not in that keyword. <sighs> yeah. Fair, fair. I mean, I I still don't see any. I, I, I bet you that I never see Sightless Snow because the Elk is just going and scoring points all over the place. I yeah. can't. Mm. Yeah. Like and I said, someone, someone will at some point do stupid shenanigans just because that's the best move to make in that particular situation. Yeah, or because he's bored, which I highly respect as well. You know, if you scored <laughs> all, all if you scored all the points, then you can be insulting and transform back into something that is slightly less good. Um, yeah, cool. So that is um, that is Sadra and the side of snow, which will be exclusively available, sadly, to the camera keyword. Um, yeah. yeah, sad times, but also well makes Marcus better, so I will not complain. And that concludes all the models. Um, so guys, what do you think? Um, Neverborn got got good stuff or mediocre stuff overall are you happy with how this turned out what would you have wished for otherwise when neverborn are at like in general so even before these releases i think neverborn were and are in a pretty good place so still a faction that makes you work for your wins but is incredibly rewarding once you know what you're doing and this sloth of releases didn't really change the general evaluation in that. So every piece we got that we talked about that upgraded one of the masters actually was an upgrade for one of those that are currently more in the back lines. So as in not not the top three or not generally in benches, at least for me. So um, all in all, I think what this release will do for Neverborn is just introduce more diversity into what we see with Neverborn and maybe encourage some testing left and right for some things. I don't think it will push Neverborn considerably, if at all, further up. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, sounds like a reasonable assumption. Turner, what do you think? Yeah, I agree in the context of the balance across factions that it doesn't really move the needle on Neverborn much. We got some things we didn't have before, and that's the offensive condition removal on the delirium and the defensive uh, condition removal as well and uh, no, i'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, the and we got the the extra focus generation plus a better armor piercing gun um which i mean everybody's talking about angel eyes anyway so that's not as new as it could have been but it's on a better damage track the mark with less range to be fair yeah that's yeah there's a pretty big difference in range uh, there less ignoring um, stuff which is basically important and i the the biggest winner internally was a keyword that struggled so that's cool i don't think it takes her titania and fey to the upper echelons of the faction but it definitely makes them more attractive as a pick because mm -hmm. aislin gets to function with athana so maybe but i mean that still bears testing i haven't put it on the table yet so it remains to be seen mm, yeah maybe maybe that's a project we could uh we could put uh, could put on video at some point in the next weeks and upload it yeah that, that would be and... interesting double stitch summoning turn one in Zareta. Yeah. Awesome. That's also good. I, I I'm I'm game. I'm I'm as always I I am good with whatever, you know that. <laughs> um, cool. So is there anything you would have wished for to be differently? Like is there something uh, you're missing in the faction? I wish Zedra was in the faction. Yeah. yeah. There's Second currently break. no leap in the faction. It's all hired from outside the faction with keyworded models and other factions we get first mate in swamp fiends um i guess marcus himself has leap but they doesn't you know you can't hire him unless you're yeah I, I i never count masters in these uh, yeah. considerations um the 
the sisters have generic marker removal, not to, not just scheme marker removal. It's one of the triggers, which is also something that you can't hire in the faction, I guess, unless you count changelings, which I don't. It's too short of a range. Um, I really don't see... We didn't really get much new besides the things I already touched on. So yeah, I would have liked to see Cedra in purple, because yeah. I think it would have been a nice model to have, you know, that's not a mature Nephilim. Yeah, um, the, the whole Eldritch horror aesthetic actually lends itself far more to Neverborn than it does to Arcanists in that regard. So I'm a bit disappointed about that one as well. Uh, I'm, I'm still freaked out by Delirious Thralls being living. I mean, I get Construct because they're basically mirrors, and I would get Typeless, but living just freaks me out. Don't ask me why. Yeah, uh, apart from that... Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with how things shaped out generally. There's, I mean, you could, we can always quibble about details, like uh, the Crookskins could have had the pseudo-leap built in so that we have a proper leap model, and Ifana's aura could just be table-wide so that the Kani would actually has a pseudo-leap uh, a la Archie. So there, there, there's minor things you could uh, wish for left and right in singular models, but all in all, everything is there that you potentially would have wanted, including things we genuinely didn't had yet, have yet, and that is uh, uh, marker removal on a pulse, uh, outside of a totem, which I never count in these things. So, okay, fair. I'm actually pretty happy with what is there, and there's lots to test, lots to try out, and lots to uh, headaches to get. Fair. Yeah, I, I, like the, I like the design of this book uh, in comparison to the two books before, because um, this gives everyone some tools to play with and i think it's much it's much more easy to balance honestly than what was before i think uh, things before went a bit out of kilter i mean i know someone left the left the scene after uh, madness dropped for a time to not be bothered by it um so yeah i think it's a, it's it's on a good track i with my own factions don't feel any different I got a lot of stuff that I like and a lot of stuff that I don't don't hyper care about, but that is nice to try out. And you get you can dust off your models again and try out if they work now, and that's good. Yeah, I think another thing that we've added is now Neverborn is hitting a critical mass of models that are cheap and also hard to remove for cost. So, uh, looking specifically in Savage, you can take the two um, Crookskins, and then three Boltungen, and then why not take two Blood Wretches, and you've got just a mountain of AP that needs... that can't. None of it can be one-shot, <laughs> unless your opponent has <laughs> the particular thing <laughs> to, to one-shot it. And it's just like, can you kill this all before I've set up to score all my points? Yeah. Oh, and also I've got a master that's good, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a list concept that I... Mm, that I still struggle to employ myself because it doesn't really lend itself to what I like to do, but which really works well with this GG. Um, yeah, I, exactly. It's good, and it's good in the context of the GG. Yeah, I know. And I'm always jealous when I play against um, McCabe with multiple botanists, and I'm like these things are so cheap, and they're such a pain in the ass to remove. Why can't I do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they need they they need something. I don't know. They're, they're they honest. need a lot of things because they had something by the, the last errata, and it still wasn't enough. No, they didn't. <laughs> they they didn't get touched. I think they needed to be touched specifically instead of touching. Uh, instead of touching the masters but Yo, um, i mean i'll touch the masters a bit less but touch botanists because botanists were like the uh the multiplier there because that yep. seven that eight defenses i don't know i mean i still manage to lose games with them but that's because i kind of suck at the game sometimes but from a stat only perspective yeah we complained a bit about Cedra being too good. Uh, botanists are basically the same and cheaper. If you look at it from I get my points. So it's hard. But yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I mean, we don't know what will be the next um, edition or the next FAQ. I mean, I'm hoping for 
I'm hoping for another Damien castration, to be honest, because that's <laughs> that's the only thing. That's the only yeah, thing this, that this time the one that really needs it. Yeah, this. I mean, the other one did really need it as well. Maybe not in that. Yeah. I mean, they both needed it. That was just that just was also busted. It's just um. Most of the things I lose all time again, I'm okay because I can see that as a challenge. And with Damien, I kind of feel like trolled when I lose against it because it's obviously very often that I can't do anything against it. When that is not that is not talking from like a casual perspective, but that is talking from a perspective of someone that plays like five to six games per week and basically has four factions. And I'm a bit, I don't know what I should really do against Damien. I mean, I can hope yeah. that my opponent. It always, it always feels like as long as you're, as long as Damien's somewhere in the midboard and the opponent can color match their cards in the configuration, you're basically out of options. Yeah, I mean, you can just remove a model per turn, and we are not talking a five soul stone cost. We are talking like remove Mad Dog or something like that, and with only with the master activation. So, and that that yeah. is fine if everyone can do that, but I think that is pretty unique thing right now and otherwise i'm kind of okay i mean yeah there are better things and there are things that are not as good i would like some um some reworks uh, on stuff that needs love looking at Faye, you know or for example elite yeah, yeah Faye definitely elite. needs love elite needs some love there's yeah. some big there's some big centerpiece models like Carver, especially the iconic Carver, is such an incredible sculpt. Yeah. But then oh, yeah. the rules are just like, why would I ever hire this? Yeah. Um, yeah Killjoy. Yeah, Silent I mean, Knight. Yeah, Killjoy. Silent Knight is amazing, but why would I ever yeah. hire Killjoy? I mean, yeah. but, but but looking at it from a more holistic perspective, even if I would do one some minor reworks on some major reworks left or right, um, what I'm actually far more interested in or uh, would be excited about would be some FAQs for some wordings because there's some stuff, um, some people know that, uh, that I have a guy I talk to regularly and uh, there's just so much in the rules text that needs to be cleaned up because as far as the ge uh, general balancing of the game goes, yes, there's stuff like Damien or Sandeep uh, where there definitely has to be a hand that uh, turns some knob in the proper direction. Uh, all in all, the game is in a good place. I mean, every faction has some game. Maybe not with all their masters, maybe just with one or two or three. But that's generally enough for a healthy game experience or comp and most importantly, competitive environment. Oh, yeah, so you, I'm you, actually okay with that. Yeah, you're going to see yeah, think... the multicolor flag for core, for sure. Uh, that is cool. I think uh, this past errata and GG change has left the game in an incredible spot. It's real good. Like, there's a couple outliers, but they're not so bad that it spoils the entire experience. And I think a lot of Malifo players are more aesthetically driven in what they play and less chasing the power. Yeah, I mean, at least that's the way it is in the vassal community. A, a lot of a lot of players leave off the really um, really super overpowered stuff after mm -hmm. like let's say five or ten games because for me it was like um, you get bored at which point you don't play as well and if you still win you don't learn and if you don't learn you don't get better so if your stuff gets nerfed after the fact which it surely will be if you're playing that um then you will be hard put to um get the work in again to get good so basically you don't do yourself a favor by always playing the overpowered stuff and there's too much of it right now that's completely busted mm, yeah I don't know. Regarding the rules, yeah, I think Turner and I yesterday had a situation where there was a rule that uh, was, I don't know, I, I think that could be more clearly worded because um, the rule book doesn't give us the exact um, the exact instruction on how to um, solve this, actually. And it actually was... I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things in that, and that's just a swath of wording inconsistency that completely trigger me then i mean I'm, I'm the kind of person who looks at a text and finds 
every little thing in it and in, in this gg for instance it's it's two schemes uh one is sweating bullets and the other one was uh deliver a message and for some reason because you, you could copy and paste a lot of the text but for some reason it's worded completely differently and then you have this uh, uh, protected territory is it no not protected territory uh espionage which just has this completely different formatting from every other scheme and yes things like that actually annoy me uh, so uh, how, how, add to how... that some rules things that are semi unclear or open to interpretation for instance shove aside is a constant point of discussion why do you get the shove if you kill your target no you don't no. yes no. you do no, no. Why do you? Yeah, because it's two different sentences. They are completely independent of each other. And yeah. two, two the different sentences, says... you can nominate the trigger because the second sentence doesn't re doesn't reference the first sentence and doesn't target. This, the core rulebook specifically says for triggers, if a target is mentioned, you don't resolve the target. Just like with pulled here or there, you can't. If you kill your target, you can't push yourself three. Yeah, because it's a singular text, but the 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 trigger itself consists of two parts, and because you have, the second part is a, a, its own sentence, you can resolve the second sentence. I, I cleared it with my rules guy, who's a better tester and everything, and that was the, the there's a. Um, uh, there's a precedent, I think it's on Lampert's or something, where they actually do reference, or so, somewhere where they do reference that as a uh, precedent, and since you have the second sentence independent in any way, shape, or form from the first sentence, you can actually do the free attack uh, after you kill your target with shove aside. No. I don't say I think I'm liking it, but that's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, major the majority <laughs> of the community is right now playing this as, as uh, you don't get it. So. Yeah, you don't. You don't get it <laughs> which is why you need an faq for this because th th this is the exact thing i mean there's there's before you uh, please nerf damien maybe touch some deep lightly no. and uh, before and after you do that before you look at any other model in the game please clean up those wordings yeah but that's a lot of text or FAQ them. i mean that's a lot of text i mean they should should do stuff like that um there should be an equalizer that is basically proofreading and i don't know I, I don't know why it's um why it's coming out different of the same machine in such a such a lot of cases. I mean it's a bit problematic because there's a lot of stuff if the community plays it as uh, version A or B for such a long time, then everyone assumes that it is a clear thing. So you pulling that one out um of the head and saying no it isn't is a bit like yeah, okay, um there, I can I can see where the argument is. Like I could yesterday see where the argument is and where I could see um, my opponent's point of view, and I can't one hundred percent disagree. Um, but it's open to discussion. And yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, the, I, the yeah the, the, the thing is we don't have we don't have um, the community is very small. Even the MWS committee is making rulings for like what hundred fifty people competing overall over a year, something like that. And maybe that's a bigger number than it actually is. Mm, I don't know. I know a couple of years ago it was like hundred and twenty people, but I think now it's. There's a pretty solid core of probably about 50 with another couple dozen that sort of rotate for what's participating on online events. But then I think a lot of communities have started picking up the MWS FAQ for their in-person play. Yeah, um, it, it is. But then again, the weird um, FAQ, one of the last weird FAQs, uh, contradicted a lot of the MWS rulings. In some cases, in some cases, they basically went the same direction, um, which is fine. It's just it, it just has the stuff just has to be FAQ'd. I mean, it's fine if the MWS came up with a different interpretation than the makers came up with, and people played it that way. Yes, it's annoying that you have to relearn it, sure, but uh, as long as there's a an FAQ that clears something that is um, uh, ambivalent. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, okay with that. Yeah, I mean, but given the amount of questions in every rules question channel that I can think of on the discords, I um, mm -hmm. mean, to rule on everything that gets asked there and put, putting that in an FAQ is probably too much to ask of anyone because that's actually a lot of work to keep it consistent. 
because you need to proofread that as well. You know, we can't have inconsistency in there. And... No, no, it's specifically for, for stuff that is obviously ambivalent, like shove aside, like uh, the stuff that is generally in the N MWS. I remember the stuff from last year with the whole Hamelin interaction. Where oh, yeah, it was... yeah, that, yeah, I mean, that was, that was a bit of a brain fart allowing that for a time there. Because yeah, that... but never, nevertheless, stuff like, stuff like that is definitely necessary to be put into an FAQ. You don't have to put every how does this and this ability work question in there, because most things can actually be uh, finagled out with the rules as written easily. It's just a couple of corner cases left and right that come up regularly yeah. that should be FAQ'd. I know, but on the other hand, if if you got a, I mean, we are talking probably a digital document with a search function, so I don't see why you shouldn't um shouldn't reference this as through book page something just to, you know, don't have to explain it to everyone again and again and again and again, mm, yeah. because it's it's the same questions that come up like over the years. I'm pretty sure everyone. You know, you get to you get to play a crew, and you think about, hey, this would really be good. And my first question right now, and this is one I didn't ask myself before the game yesterday, which of course mistake is that allowed? How is it allowed? Because I didn't think it would come up. Usually, um, by now I get suspicious if something seems really good and um, check if it's actually a viable option. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I don't know. Um, I would still be voting for more frequent FAQs of the rules or at least mm -hmm. of um stuff like that but maybe it's too much to ask of the company um and how it's structured i don't know no there's there, there's an additional argument to be made to have less frequent faqs and erratas and that is the casual scene because you in in a, in a game of this size i mean we the currently we have almost 800 individual profiles in this game if you errata stuff too often, you actually put off the casual players, and those are the ones you want to get into the game on in the long yeah, term. Yeah, but but I, I'm I'm 100% with you. Um, I lost most of my casual players mentally when they released the burns with doubling the masters. Um, so if you want casual players, you should probably keep an eye on the bloat, and therefore if you decide for let's go for the bloat the argument with not doing enough faqs because the casuals can't uh can't get onto the game doesn't really track in my opinion uh, fair enough. i mean it's uh, something that you discuss with people every now and then and yeah i don't want to be blathering too much about this but if you want to play this game, there's a lot of reading involved, and after a lot of reading is involved, there's a lot of falling on your face involved when you play against people, because uh, every matchup you don't know, you will learn something. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you lose the game, but there will be moments when your opponent says, I do that, that, and that, and by the way, that makes that happen, and you go like, what the hell? Uh, that sounds like bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and, then, and sometimes you just go and say, no, I don't believe that, I have to check that with some people, and Unbelievably. I've been playing for over two years now, and I still ask my opponents, "How does this work again?" Yeah, I mean, show I, me. Yeah, Explain I mean, it to me like I'm four. Yeah, and um, Mizaki's bonus action is one of the examples where I like, after three years of playing, was like a bit. You, I, I do what now? I discard all my hand and get stunned. You, you're fucking kidding me. But people actually seem to agree that it works that way, and there's a lot of stuff like that. We will be really surprised. So, yeah, it's it's a highly complex game. So I think not FAQing it to make it um, less ambivalent or, um, you know, less easy to understand, less streamlined is not an option. I think FAQing. Yeah, yeah is... absolutely. So that that is the thing, um, and I think the casuals will have fun if you have a good community and can have a laugh and don't try to steamroll them all day. Which is hard. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I don't understand that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you understand uh, as well as I do. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't help it, and sometimes you can. I mean, I know you're doing sterling work for the community overall. So, yeah, by organizing tournaments, not by bringing in new players. I have other guys in my community for that. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. Shout out to Schmidt and Patrick. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, that is that is cool. Um, I mean, tournaments are also important. Yeah, cool. Anything else we need to um, put in at that point? Anything you guys want to plug for your own purposes? 
Oh, so many things. So as, as Hagen <laughs> alluded to a couple of times, uh, I will, anyone who wants to either meet me, shake my hand, or punch me in the face, please not the nose, uh, can do that next weekend in Belgium, if this episode got, goes up before that. And if not, I'll be organizing my own tournament the week after, and we still have a couple of spots left. So anyone in the German community who now really wants to proxy and test the new Neverborn models, there's your chance. Fuchs Schwanz 6, you know, in the long shanks, you'll find it. If not, hit me up. And uh, the next big one I'll be on after that will be the Bayouwaren Bash in Rosenheim. So, also in Germany, also awesome community organizing, cool people organizing that one. And after that, Cartographers Cup, which I will plug again because their teams were not full yet, and it would be so much more awesome if every if eight nations come with eight people. I think we will make that happen somehow. That will be great. Yeah, awesome. So a lot yeah. of tournaments coming up. Why why am I not going to all of those tournaments? Oh, because I don't have the money. Yeah, why is that? Because I'm lazy and sitting at home. Okay, fair. We we talked about that now. Um I'll be joining the Cartographers Cup, nevertheless. That will be Yeah, that will be that will be great. Cool. Uh Turner for you, anything you like to plug right now? Uh, well, we're just currently on the third round of the current NWS event, and the next one won't start until a couple weeks after this one finishes, so we still have two and a half rounds to go. So in a little over a month, um, be on the lookout for the next MWS Vassal event. I'll leave it to Hagen to link the Discord in the show notes or however. Yeah that works yeah. um come play online uh you don't have to be super competitively minded to play online even though the vast majority of players that do play on vassal are uh, i think it's a really good place to learn because you'll get perspectives from tons of different metas obviously i live in the southern united states and one of my most common opponents is german um i play against people from new zealand and britain and russia and literally everywhere that isn't the u.s plus places that are in the u.s uh, if you happen to live in tennessee that is where i live so you can find me on that mws discord my name is roadhouse uh it's pretty obvious which one i am because i have an eagle an explosion and an american flag in my handle <laughs> on that yeehaw. menu um yeehaw. Yeah, yeehaw. <laughs> um and yeah i think that's all yeah sounds awesome so i i think i will put all the plugs i've just heard including all the long shanks links um and the discord links to uh, both mws and the german server in the show notes i don't know why i shouldn't be always doing that anyway so um yeah hope to meet some of you guys on some of the tournaments or um online i can only stress the point that tournament because i have heard of people not joining online play because they think that something i don't know there's a lot of reasons not to do things and um i can say the people in the mws and the online community not being nice guys and picking you up and having having a good time with you is not a reason it's absolutely not happening um and you will actually learn a lot if you can manage to sit still in front of a, a screen for three hours and uh, shove pixels around and pretend it's plastic miniatures <laughs> all yeah, right i will say that i traveled to adepticon based purely off of meeting people in the online <laughs> malifaux spaces that said hey you should come to this event so i did i traveled from tennessee to chicago to play in a tournament and meet people that i had met online and of course you know had dinner with everybody and it was a great time so it, you'll definitely meet people that are a lot of fun to interact with um most everyone is willing to engage in discussion on what happened during the game after, which is generally a very good place to learn. But uh, yeah, it's great. Do it. Awesome. Tournaments in general. Yeah, it's the best, in general. best place to learn and the best place to get better and the best place to meet like-minded people that you can spend a nice evening with. Yeah, yeah. That That is that is indeed the case. So looking forward to that beer. Um anywho guys it was a, it was a real pleasure having you um as well discussing the models as some thoughts afterwards um i 
I'm hoping very strongly that we will be able to um, welcome you again on the channel and on the podcast when we are going to do some actually uh, keyword deep dives, which I would like to do after we finish with the Ashes of Mali for Morals. And maybe we do some discussion about the game in general in a, in a bigger round than like three people. That is also one of the things I'd like to do, which I think will be, will be a lot of fun if not hyper-constructive, but at least it will be interesting to listen to. Um, so yeah, guys, um, thanks once again. And for everyone at home, thanks for listening. Um, subscribe to the channel, give us a like, leave a comment if you agree and or disagree. And of course, join all of the events. I say, um, yeah, have a good one until then. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for inviting. Yep. Thanks for having me on.